It's past the top of the hour, wherever you are, then of course you are listening to me live and direct. For the sake of doubt, it is 9.30 a.m. in the morning here in Johannesburg. And of course, from Johannesburg going down to Motherland Biafra, it should be the same minutes past 8 a.m. in the morning in that holy land of Biafra. And of course, the same minutes past the top of the hour wherever you are my name is Samazi Kechukwonoa I hear from Omoa. Omoa is in all the province of Biafra land of course I am a servant of the people of Biafra it is a task that I have taken upon me of course to do for my people and that will I do and I don't care what anybody says or do it does not deter me because this is my own prerogative this is my own land and this is what I've taken upon me to do for the restoration of the sovereign state of Biafra. Allow me to welcome you this morning. Allow me to welcome you with a resounding good morning. It is a good morning. It is a breakfast show like none other. It is a breakfast with Mazike Chukwonoha. And of course, it is my privilege and honor to welcome you wherever you are hearing the sound of my voice in case you don't know. IPOB is worldwide. IPOB is in over 80 something nations of this world. My goodness me, we are formidable, that I can assure you. Therefore, if you are hearing my voice, permit me once again to welcome you to say a warm good morning. I've come this morning so that we can interact. I've come this morning so that we can worship Elohim on this platform they call Radio Biafra because in case you don't know by now that Biafra is our religion and on this platform Radio Biafra not just Radio Biafra but the University of Radio Biafra a university like none other here is where we worship Elohim welcome back once again it is radio biafra sadek on this platform it's where we worship elohim of course we are back again to do the needful we are back again to preach this gospel according to the restoration of the sovereign state of biafra therefore i am inviting you wherever you are and of course to invite others because we are going to make this program a worthwhile this morning it is radio biafra it is ipo OB and this morning we are going to interact because if there is anything we do best on this platform we get beer friends talking this is IPOB for goodness sake this is IPOB it is a quasi military type of an organization where we believe in command and control do you now understand what you are fighting we must make it very very clear that we are in a struggle for liberation. There is no democracy in a revolution. We are in a perpetual state of a revolution. There is no democracy. We are a quasi-military organization. Not in terms of our outlook or pursuit of what we believe in, but in terms of how we are structured, it is called command and control. That is why we are the highest, the largest mass movement in the world. When Biafra comes, you can do all the democracy in your life that you want. There are a lot of things that we are doing that we cannot tell you. When we tell you sometimes, oh, but why are you telling us? You don't have to tell us. But when we don't tell you, you also complain. Oh, why haven't you told us? So we cannot win. The money goes from up again. If you take them up, they say, you know, Sumabeke is, is the dead body of a white uh, uh, court mind those days. White colonialists. What do you see? This is the commissioner. Take him up. You say, no, 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 no. Bring him down. You say, no, 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 no. 
to welcome back. Of course, before we proceed, we need to pray and commit this program to the hands of Elohim. And then, of course, we will open our lines. But before we open our lines, I want to say a few words to us this morning. And then I will allow us to interact because I haven't been on air for a while now. And of course, I believe the right thing to do is to give us the opportunity to call in this morning and speak our mind. I think that is what we are going to do. But first of all, we need to pray and come in this program to the hands of Elohim. Father, we thank you this morning. We bless and worship you, God. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Father, we say, let your name be glorified in the name of Chukoki Kabiyama. Father, we thank you for a day like this. We thank you for our people. We thank you, Lord, because we are Biafrans. Father, we say, to you be all the glory. To you be all the honors. To you be all the adoration and thanksgiving. We worship you, Elohim, because you are the one that gave this vision to our leader, man, and I'm the Kano. Father, Lord, we bought into this vision because we believe in that vision. And today we have come, oh God, we have come that Biafra will be restored in our own time. But a lot of mountains are before us, oh God. And you say to Zerubbabel, what is that mountain before you? For that mountain shall be removed for your sake. Therefore, Father, we pray for our sake this morning. Let the mountain move. Let the mountain be removed. That Biafra will be restored in our own time. Father, we pray. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Because you know that you have answered us. And Father, we say for our leader, Mazen Nam De Kano. We pray, Lord, for his urgent release, his imminent release, O oh God. Unconditional release. These are what we pray this morning. And Father, we believe that you have heard us. Because we pray in the name of Chukwu Kikabiyama. He said, he said, he said. In hunger and in thirst, in nakedness and in need of everything. And I will put a yoke of iron upon your neck. I will destroy you completely. A nation will come against you from afar and from the ends of the earth as swift as the eagle flies. It's welcome back once again. Of course, it is Radio Biafra Sadek. My name is Samazi Kechuku Onoha here from Omawa in all the province of Biafra land. Let's get straight to it before I open our lines this morning. I want to say uh, just a few words and of course I would then go straight to our lines and give us the opportunity this morning to call in and of course say what is in our mind. Um, sometime in 2019, while I was still in Israel, I did preach a message on this platform, Radio Biafra. And the title of that message I preached in 2019 was Biafra, a people marked for systematic extermination. Actually, I did not plan that message. I came on air, and of course, I was led to preach that uh, gospel. Of course, people were dying quite all right, but it is not at this rate. It is not this way. Then, of course, I was really, really overwhelmed that I began to preach that word, which says, Biafra, people marked for systematic extermination. You know, most of us are still expecting war. They are still expecting when bombs should be dropped in Biafra land indiscriminately. Some people are still maybe expecting when, you know, soldiers, armor brigade will be rolled out in Biafra land and begin to shoot on sight, killing everybody in numbers. But what they fail to realize is that the people we are dealing with are not stupid. The people we are dealing with are very, very corny. They are very, very, very corny. You don't understand. They know exactly what they are doing. They know that there is no way they are going to kill us the way they killed us in 1967. And of course, the only way they've resolved to kill Biafrans this day is systematically. And that is what is playing out in Biafra land today. I mean... Never in my, my, in my life, in my entire whole life, have I seen blood the way I am seeing it today in Biafra land. Never in my entire life, in my youthful life, in my teenage life, have I seen blood the way I am seeing it today in Biafra land. I don't even know where people are dying more this day. Is it in Biafra land or in the north? Because the way our people are dying today, the way people are being wasted, the way people are being killed, 
in the street of Biafra land. It scares the hell out of me. I say it scares the hell out of me. Sometimes I begin to ask myself, is this the same Biafra land that I know? Is this the same Biafra land of peace and tranquility that I know? You know, we used to say, why are you people bringing the soldiers in Biafra land? Biafra land is a peaceful place. Biafra land is a peaceful area. And now they are trying to turn Biafra land into a bloody land. They are trying to turn Biafra land into a land that flows with blood instead of a land that flows with milk and honey. And of course, we are watching helplessly. We are watching helplessly while they serenade the land of our ancestors with blood. There is no day that will go past you will not hear that somebody is being gunned down in a pool of blood. In a pool of blood. And then you, have you ever asked yourself, you know, in many places I see people get shot. Even here in South Africa, I see somebody get shot and they die. But when you see people get shot even here in South Africa or anywhere in the world, you don't see pool of blood. You don't see pool of blood. Have you ever asked yourself, why is it that when people are get shot, people, are, people get killed in Biafra land, you see pool of blood? <laughs> The kind of bullet that these guys, that these morons use to kill our people is not the average bullet you know. It's not the normal bullet you know. They use the abnormal bullet. They use the oversized bullet. A bullet that when you get shot with it, there is no chances of recovery. You know, people get shot and they get taken to hospital and they get treated and sometimes they survive. Who have you ever heard got shot in Biafra land and was treated and they survived? No. They shoot you, you die right there at the spot in your pool of blood because the bullet is so much that it will destroy every veins and artery in your, in your body. Some get shot in the head, their head will open up. But sometimes, do you know that when you shoot people in the head, their head will not open up, the bullet will penetrate, but their head will not open up. But because of the size and the caliber of the bullet they use against our people right there in Biafra land, because they are out there to shoot to kill. They are out there to make sure when they shoot you, you die and you don't wake up again. Systematic extermination of Biafran people. It is a well orchestrated act. It is a well orchestrated act that has been rolled out against Biafran people. We are still waiting when Fulanese will invade our land. We are still waiting when they are going to declare war on Biafra land. Whereas there is no better war than what is happening now. There is no better genocide than what is happening now. The only difference is that this one is systematic. I preach that gospel. And of course, I'm going to look for that audio once again. I did load that audio on IPOB Community Radio. It is called Biafrans. People marked for systematic extermination. And we are busy jumping around, we are busy gossiping, we are busy on Facebook talking rubbish and nonsense while our people are dying, while our percentage is decreasing, while our numbers are shrinking. They know exactly what they are doing, they know how they are going to do it, and yes, they are doing it right. Our leader told us that Fulanese are very patient kind of people. They plan before they execute. And when they execute, they don't go wrong. They don't make mistakes. You know, from the start, when they labeled IPOB, the indigenous people of Biafra, a terrorist organization, when they proscribed IPOB, most of us don't understand what they are doing. You thought that they are just proscribing IPOB for the sake of it. For the, you know, I mean, just for the interest of it. No, they had a master plan. Proscribing IPOB was just the beginning of the end. Proscribing IPOB was just a way to get it off the ground. I don't know if you've heard this for those who speak Igbo. When you want to kill a dog, you name it a bad name. 
You can call that dog bad name and say, oh, this dog, every time you are peeing everywhere, every time this dog, you are messing up my room because you are tired of this dog and you want to kill that dog. And you cannot just go and kill a dog without a fight. You cannot just go and kill a dog without labeling that dog. You must label that dog. So that when people ask you, why are you killing this dog? You will say, because it is a bad dog. When you want to kill a dog, you label that dog. That is what they have done with IPOB. That is what they have done with the indigenous people of Biafra. Now, when they are labeling IPOB, when they are proscribing IPOB, some stupid people, if life was in our land, they were happy. They were rejoicing. Yes, yeah, IPOB, IPOB. Even your governors, they were in on it. They all proscribed IPOB. But what they don't understand is this. Fulanis are very smart. Fulanis are smarter than you. You can call them Aboki. You can call them Aboki Mekudi. Aboki me this one. Aboki this one. Aboki. But they are very smart. More smarter than you. Because Britain. Britain trained them. Yes, Britain trained them very well. And they are still training them till today. So Fulanis are so smarter than us. I don't even know whether we are smart again or <laughs> I don't even know because they used to say that uh, uh, the Igbos are the most intelligent people on earth. They are the most intelligent people. Allah Obunu, they keep deceiving you, giving you big names. Yeah, you are the most uh, entrepreneurs, this and that. Wherever you go, you don't see an Igbo man. Pack your things and go. Rubbish! Rubbish. They were using those things to boost your egos. They were using those things to bruise your egos because they know that we are egoistic set of people. They know that we are so arrogant. They know that we are so... I don't know how to, to classify our type. They know us very well. They got us figured out. That is why if you want, if you want to do a... What, what do I call it? If you want to do a traditional marriage, let me tell you who we are. Let me tell you who we are. If you want to do a traditional marriage... And you see one rich man in your community. If you go and invite him, you know he will not, he will not come. No, he will not come. Trust me when I tell you. But for you to get that rich man in your village to come to your traditional marriage. And when he come, he's going to spend so much money. It's very simple. You go and buy a, a bottle of Hennessy. Or sometimes you can even buy a carton of beers. But you must get a very expensive alcohol. And you go to his place in the evening with your wife. You go there. Hey, you kneel down. You say to him, hey, Nani, we came to thank you and for what you've been doing for our community. And also, we want to beg you to come, please, and grace our occasion. As a matter of fact, we want to make you the chairman of that occasion. He will smile. He will laugh. You have touched his ego. <laughs> That's a typical evil man. You have touched his ego. He will smile and say, no, no problem, I'm coming. And that day, he will go and wear a very expensive clothes with his big car. He will arrive because he's the chairman of the occasion. Everybody will see him. These Fulanis, they know that's how we roll. They know that is how we roll. That they have to praise us. They have to tell us everything. And every time they will say, Igbo man is this. Igbo man is entrepreneur. You know, Igbo man is uh, this and that. They are everywhere. We are everywhere. Being everywhere is not a blessing. Being everywhere is a curse for goodness sake, people. No people are everywhere. No people, no sane people on earth are everywhere. No sane people are everywhere. It is people who are being chased around. People who are being chased away from their home that are everywhere like us. So don't think because we are all over the world makes us something. Don't think because we are all over the world makes us, I mean, I don't know, makes us, how do I put it? Not at all. Not at all. It's a curse on us. Our leader even said it. In Gemonar. I will chase you around. I will chase you to all parts of the earth. And you think that because I'm in South Africa, you are in the UK, he is in America, and he's in South Korea, and you are listening from me from Spain. And the other one, where are you? Uh, okay, foreign. Okay, foreign is listening from me from Poland. And this one is listening from me from there and there. Oh, we are blessed. We are everywhere. We are not blessed. We are cursed. We are cursed with a curse. Being everywhere is not a blessing. Do you understand? We should be at home. 
We should be at home saving our land because they are killing our people systematically. They are destroying our land systematically. By the time you come back from wherever it is that you are, everywhere, everything is gone. You are everywhere and you are jumping up. You don't know us. Hey, we are everywhere now. Eh? I'm in Japan. Eh? He's in Netherlands. Who else is there? Anywhere where you go, you don't see an Igbo man. You know, when I'm using the word Igbo, I'm talking about Biafrans. Anywhere you go, you don't see an Igbo man. Pack your things and go. Rubbish. I said rubbish. Anywhere you go, if there's no Igbo man, pack your things and go. Rubbish. It is not a blessing. It's a curse. Don't think that good things have done for you because you are scattered everywhere. You are scattered everywhere because they want to destroy your home so that you won't have a home to come back to. Our leaders say that they have destroyed the fabrics of our existence. Am I talking to somebody this morning? Am I talking to Pierre France? Our leaders say that they have destroyed the fabrics of our existence. What are the fabrics of our existence? Now, let me educate you because this is University of Radio Biafra. My goodness me, Mahadum. After the civil war in 1967, they say, okay, since we cannot kill them all, since we cannot destroy them all, since they are too stubborn, that we cannot destroy them all. We try though to eliminate them. To obitrate them out of this planet earth. The stubborn Igbo man. The stubborn Biafran. What else which can we do? They had a master plan. They had a master plan. Let's stuff them out of fund. Let's steal their money. So that they will be wretched and poor. And then they will be working for us. They will be forced to be in Ugwausa working for us. They will be forced to be everywhere. It's scavenging. As a matter of fact, they made us scavengers. Because what we are doing in overseas, we are scavenging. Because Elohim is merciful, sometimes we scavenge, we scavenge education. Sometimes we scavenge, we scavenge money. But we are scavengers. That's what Fulani has turned us to. That's what British turned us to. Scavengers. They say, let's take all their money. And that is why they gave your parents, our fathers, 20 pounds. Do you understand? Do you remember 20 pounds? Does it ring a bell? Does it make sense now? Do you think that Awolowo needed your money? Do you think that Nigerian government needed the, our money, Biafra money after the war? No, they don't need it. They have more. Oil is there, don't forget. They don't need our money. Remember, they don't need the money. They did it for a purpose. They did it to stuff us out of fund. They did us so that we can be useless. They did us so that even generations to come will be useless. Because there won't be foundation. If you have a child... And there is no foundation for that child. That child will become useless. And when he have his own child, his own child will be useless. It only takes the hand of God to turn things around. Otherwise, from generation to generation, useless altogether. That's why they took the money. They did not take the money because they need it. Our whole world does not, did not, doesn't need your money at all. The zoo government does not need our money at all. They did it for a purpose. So when they took the 20 pounds, they know what next. What is going to happen is because in your family, because some family you will find nine kids, ten kids. That is how our parents, they do it. My father had nine. Some have even have twelve. They know that in that family of ten children, there is no way on earth your father will be able to train those twelve children. Maybe five is boys, five, five are girls. And then you know what he's going to do? He will tell the girls, you are going to get married. Because there is no money to train you. And they will get married early. As early as possible. My mother got married at the age of 16. My mother got married at the age of 16 years. They will make their children, their daughters, get married so quick. Because there is no money to take care of this full house. Because when you come to that house in the evening, on a say it's your go. You beat this one over the plate of food. There is fight. People are throwing food at each other. I experienced it because I came from a big family. Any day we eat, my goodness me, it's either I will have a, 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 a torn lips or a blown mouth because there will be boxing flying over a plate of food. That is what they did. And they did it well. They did it well. 
And then they will turn to the boys and say, okay, there is no money. You are the first son of the family. You need to go to Uguawosa. Because then nobody's talking about uh, Obodoibo. Nobody talks about overseas. You need to go to Uguawosa. You need to go to Makodi. You need to go to Akure. You need to go to Lagos. Go and learn trade. You need to go to Onicha. Go and learn trade and help me, your father, take care of the family. I cannot do it alone. Maybe that first son of the family is very educated, very intelligent. If he had gone to school, he might be a medical doctor, a lawyer. But what choice does he have? He will now go into trade. And when he finished, sometimes he settled. Some of them are not settled. Some were settled. And from there, they travel to oversee. Do you see how they begin to chase us away from home? That's why when you go to Biafra land today, there are no men left. Only few men left. Women everywhere are married. Nobody to marry them because the men has been chased away like scavengers all around the world. What am I talking about this morning? I am telling you the way they have set it up. I am telling you how they set us up. We thought it was a blessing for us to run from one country to another. No, it is not a blessing. It is a curse. The day you leave your father's home as the first son of the family and you have not been home for 10 years and you tell me you are blessed. No, you are cursed because you are the first son. Maybe your father is no more. You should be at home taking care of business, but you can't because you don't even have money to go back home. So how are you blessed overseas? You are a scavenger. That's what Fulani has turned you into. And you are looking at an example of a scavenger talking to you this morning. You are looking at a typical example of a scavenger talking to you. I am a confirmed scavenger. Now let me tell you my story a bit. Because I like to use myself as a case study. It is not good enough me telling you, telling you about you. What about me? If I use myself as a case study, maybe you can learn one or two things from me. I was born into a family of nine children. I'm the first son. It came to a time when I finished writing my uh, common entrance. I was so looking forward to go to the university. I love education. God is my witness. I'm very, I'm very intelligent and stubborn as well. You know, between intelligent and stubborn, my father have to choose one because I'm very, very stubborn. I give my father a right for his money. So my father called me one day and sat me down and said to me, Ike Chuku, you see, you are the son and we have so many girls, you know, and you and your two brothers. Ike Chuku, I, by then I've already entered class one. Are you listening to me this morning? I've already entered class one and I was doing well. I was doing well. I joined the more a secondary school in Onicha. I was doing well. It was my first time in class one. They call it JSS one now, isn't it? JSS three. I don't know what they call it these days, but it's class one in secondary school. I was doing well. My father called me one morning and sat me down and said, hey, Chuku, you see, men don't go to school. <laughs> That's what my father told me. Men don't go to school. What men do is when they finish at least primary six, they go into apprenticeship. It's either you go and learn how to walk or you go and do apprenticeship, learn how to trade. When you are done, they will say to you, so that you can come and help me train your sisters. Let them go to school. It is women who go to school, not men. That's what my father told me. I was so devastated. I cried. I shed tears. It wasn't his fault. It was Fulanist's fault. It was British fault because that was the whole plan. Scatter them, scatter them. So that they don't amount to anything. They don't go to school. But they will be outside scavenging, working for a white man all over the world because that's what we do. We go overseas. What do we do overseas? We wash plates. <laughs> I was in Israel. <laughs> I wash plates. God help me. My hand was so white. I wash plates, my God. I don't even know if I'm dying or if I'm alive. And I'll be washing that plate, standing up for 10 hours. They'll be shouting at me, yalla, 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 make fast, make fast. What is wrong with you today? Are you not strong today? They see me as a tree. They see me as a, as a, as a, as a, as a stone. 
They don't know there's blood that flows in me. As long as I stand up for 10 hours washing that plate, they are happy. He said, I know, Budo Yibo. We are scavengers. And that is the master plan of the Fulanese and the British. Scatter them all around the world. Make them amount to nothing. Let them scavenge. It will take them 20 years, 30 years. By the time they make money, they're already 70 years old. Some would prefer to die, whatever it is that they are, than to go back home. And some of them are even the first son. Their kingdom is waiting for them. Their father's dynasty is waiting for them. They are the first son to take over. Their father is dead. Their father is dead long ago. Their father's brother is still in their land. Nobody to question him. Because the first son is far away in England. The first son is far away in the US. Eating burger. So my father told me, no, I have to quit school. And you know how it works those days? You need to take your locker to school. And then, of course, if you finish, you have to bring back your locker when you're done with school. Like when you're done with class five, you go and bring back your locker. My father said, I have to go and bring back my locker. And that is the worst part of it. That is the most shameful part of it. Because now, fellow students will see you carry your locker, leaving school, showing them that there is no money at home, showing them that I am from the poorest of the poorest. I cannot afford education. I don't know what to do. And I have to do it during the school days, school, during the school hour. I cannot go to school in the night to take my locker because they won't let me. So I pick up courage. I went to school. I picked my locker. The whole teachers were so upset. They said, no, you are not going. You are going to meet your father because they know I am so educated. The is so intelligent. When it comes to uh, literature, oral reading, my goodness me, I will stand up. I will, leave, I will read the book of Oliver Twist without looking at the book. I said, I will read Oliver Twist without looking at the book. That is how intelligent I am. And if you think I am joking, I can read for you the first page of Oliver Twist. Among other buildings in a certain town, there is a house meant for poor people. They go there when they are sick or have no money. Oliver Twist was born there. Her mother, an old woman, looking sick, she said, let me see the child and die. And then he said to her, you should not talk about dying yet. What am I reading, Oliver Twist? That is how intelligent I was in school those days. The teachers were crying. I picked my locker. From Modebe to where we live, we live in Sinai Street. I was walking home, I was crying. The first son of his father, the first son of the family, a guy who might end up being something powerful. But this dream and vision has been cut, short lived because of Fulani and Britain. Because this is what they meant for me. This is how they want me to end up. Because they know if I continue and become something big, then of course there will be great minds who will come together one day to ask them for Biafra. So I take my locker and I was moving back, going home, crying on the street. Everyone was looking at me. Some people still talk about it today. It was, it, it was epic. A young boy with his school locker and they know what it meant. No more education. The family can't afford education. Then I took that locker, I got home, I dropped my locker. Now it's time for them to take me to where to go and uh, do apprenticeship. My goodness me. Now, this is the beginning of my problems in life. They take me to this master. He doesn't want me because I'm so stubborn. They move me to this one. They move me to many houses. I lived in many people. My goodness me. This one we said, no, I don't want him. He's so stubborn. This one we said, no, he, I, I want people from the village. This one is uh, born in Onicha. He does, he's, um, he's very, very rough and a lot of stories. Until my father doesn't know what to do, he takes me, okay, now, you go and learn how to make shoes. Since nobody wants to take you as boy boy, I went and learned how to do shoes. Why am I telling you all these things? Why am I telling you about me? Why am I using myself as a case study? I want to tell you how they destroyed the fabric of our existence. How they destroyed our family union. How they destroyed Biafran's family foundation. How they made sure at the age of 20, you cannot sit around with your family. Some of us left at the age of 20. Some left at the age of 26. Till today, we are far, far away from families. Most of your children, brothers and sisters have died. Some of them have married away. You've never seen them. That 
is what Fulani did. That is what Britain did. It was planned, well orchestrated, and that plan is still on as I'm talking to you today, but it has moved to another level. Systematic extermination. And I will tell you why it's changed to systematic extermination. I'm coming to that. If you will be patient for me this morning, I never meant to go this far, but I had to, to explain to you, Biafras, the demon we are facing, because some of you are relaxed. Some of you are relaxed. You are so relaxed that you don't understand what time it is. And that's why Mazen Lamdekano said this to you. Listen to what he said to you, Mazen Lamdekano. Just listen. Understand what you are fighting. We must make it very, very clear that we are in a struggle for liberation. There is no democracy in a revolution. We are in a perpetual state of a revolution. There is no democracy. We are a quasi-military organization. Not in terms of our outlook or pursuit of what we believe in, but in terms of how we are structured, it is called command and control. That is why we are the highest, the largest mass movement in the world. When Biafra comes, you can do all the democracy in your life that you want. There are a lot of things that we are doing that we cannot tell you. When we tell you sometimes, oh, but why are you telling us? You don't have to tell us. But when we don't tell you, you also complain. Oh, why haven't you told us? So we cannot win. Nobody goes more again. If you take them up, they say, you know, Simobeke is, is the dead body of a white uh, uh, court mind those days. White colonialist. Not this illicit commissioner. Take him up, you say, no, 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 no. Bring him down, you say, no, 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 no. Do you understand what he's talking about? The man that knows tomorrow, the man that sees tomorrow, Basin Lam Kano, do you understand what he's talking about? He knows where we are coming from. He knows that the fabric of our existence has been destroyed completely. He knows what family Fulani and Britain he planned for us. He knows Basin Lam Kano. He's a victim. He's a victim of the so-called scavengers. Even though he is from a, a, a rich family, even though he is a prince. But yet, he was outside. Why did Mazen Amdekano go to the UK? He went to the UK because he cannot get good education in the zoo. Remember, he went to Osoka first. But he could not get what he wants because he's a Biafran. They destroyed the fabrics of our existence. And from that, they scattered us all around the world and made us scavengers today. Don't tell me you are in, a, in, in Spain. Don't tell me you are in the UK. Don't tell me you are in South Korea. Don't tell me you are in Japan. If I ask you now to give me $1,000, you can't. No, you can't. Not because you don't want, but you don't have it. And you've been there for 20 years. My goodness me. But you can't give me $1,000. Because you don't have it. It's a fact of life. You are struggling in Japan. You are struggling in Spain. You are struggling in the UK, in the US. And when they ask you, come, let's get Biafra. Let's get freedom. You want to fight. You want factionism. You are talking rubbish. You are talking nonsense. As if you are happy in being in the UK for 20 years. My goodness me. What kind of people are we? Are you not tired of being a scavenger? Are you not tired of suffering? Don't you want to come back home? Don't you want to come and smell your father's home? Don't you want to come and see the wreckage in your father's compound? Don't you want to come back and see how people are laughing at your father's compound? The only way to do that is for you to know that you are a military. You are not an ordinary person. That you are not in a democracy yet. That you are fighting. You are fighting. That the people you are fighting, the monsters you are fighting, my goodness me, they are great. These guys are so corny. That's the word I use. They are so corny. Did you see how they brainwashed all your governors and turned Biafra land into a war zone? 
and turned Biafra land into a blood, a pool of blood. My goodness, I've never seen something like that. When I was growing up, when they said to us, there is a dead body in Bida Road, we avoid Bida Road. We don't even cross Bida Road. It is a big deal. Everybody is saying, my goodness, me, there is a dead body in Bida Road. It is a big deal. It's a big deal to announce that there is a dead body in Bida Road. Nobody even go closer. But today, dead body is like nothing. Today, dead bodies are like a way of life in Biafra land. Kids of 15 years are running around a dead body. When somebody dies in your compound, you come out. I'm asking you the grown-ups now, the adults now. When somebody die in, your, die in your yard where you live, do you come out? You are afraid to see a dead body. But today, today, they have made it so easy that even our kids are not afraid of dead body. Do you know what he's doing to our children? He's turning them into a monster. Do you know that? Seeing a dead body, pool of blood without remorse, it turns our children into a future monster. Do you know that? Because our child can pick up a knife tomorrow and stab another child to death. It's not a big deal. He just died. He's just died. Killing has become a way of life in Biafra land. This is what the fallen he wants. If we cannot engage them in another war, if we cannot kill them again and wipe them away, which we cannot do because the world is so civilized, they won't even let us do it. Why don't we kill them systematically? Killing me softly, surely, steady, slowly, and they are dying and they are decreasing. We are wiping them away from the face of the earth. They are going before you know it. The men are dead. The youth who are supposed to fight, they are nowhere to be found but six feet under. Some are being scattered in the wilderness. We don't even know where their bodies are. This is the master plan. This is the master plan of Fulani. This is the master plan of Fulani. Fulani are so patient that they waited for the houses until they conquer Hausa. They are so patient. They waited for the Yorubas until they take some landmarks from the Yorubas. Why wouldn't they be so patient for the greatest of them all? The Biafra nation. Why wouldn't they be so patient until they take over? My goodness me, they are almost there. They are almost there. Ebony is gone. Ebony state is gone. You know that for sure. Anambra is now on the card. Anambra is for taking. Imo state, I don't even know if Imo state is like it's almost gone. They are taking it. They are taking it gradually. They are taking it. They are taking it gradually. And me and you, we are watching. We are talking. We are gossiping. We are skinnering. We are shouting on Facebook. They are taking our land gradually but surely. And hell yeah, they are taking our land. And they will take it. You can shout and say, no, they won't. What are you going to do about it? That's the question. That's the million dollar question. What are you going to do about it? They are not going to take it. What are you going to do? Because even today, people are being gone down indiscriminately. They are shooting. They are killing our people. I saw the one that made me cry last night. A small boy, a small boy was gone down in his pool of blood. I don't know for, for my life what that boy could have done. A small boy was gone down and the sister was crying in the pool of blood by the military, by the zoo soldiers. Systematic extermination. There goes another scientist. There goes another Biafran doctor. There goes another Biafran engineer. Gone down. Gone. Gone forever. You will never see him again. Is it not time for us to come together? Is it not time for us to face the common enemy? Is it not time for us to throw away those evil man egoists? Throw away that evil man ego. We add, our ego is too much. It is too much. Who are you? You are nothing but dust. You are just dust. You are nobody. You are dust. That's what you are. Can we throw that ego aside for once and fight for our life? Because what we are fighting now is no longer for freedom. We are fighting for our life. We are no longer fighting for freedom for your information. We are fighting for our life. Because it's only somebody who is alive that will fight for freedom. If I ask you to go back to your father's compound from the UK, from Spain, from Poland, from Germany, would you? 
from South Africa. If I ask you to go back home, would you? Would you dare? Would you dare? I went home to go and bury my mother. Can you imagine? My own brothers and sisters called me and said, you know what they say to me? Are you out of your mind? Are you crazy? Are you stupid? I felt offended. I went to bury my mother as the first son. They say, Ishadukwagemma. Can you imagine? It has gotten to that. It has gotten to that that I, the first son of the family, cannot go home. That is how terrible it is. It is easy to talk here in South Africa. It is easy for me to talk to you here in South Africa freely. It is easy for you to talk back at me from wherever it is that you are. But it's not easy for me and you to go home and talk. No, not at all. And that is why God is going to kill any man, any woman, and their family, and their generation, born and unborn, who dare try to destroy what we are doing because our life depends on it. You see what we are doing? Our life depends on it. I can kill you. I will commit murder if you try to destroy what we are doing because this is my life. I have no other hope. I have no other hope than this. Not just my life, but the life of my children, the life of my unborn children. And you want to mess with it? I will commit murder in the first degree. I swear by my father's grave, I will kill you. If I, for me to allow you to destroy this, do you understand? I've labored. I was telling you about myself. I was telling you my story. I did everything. I did everything possible. At the end of the day, here I am in South Africa, Israel, all over the world, scavenging. That is the final title of a Biafran. Whatever it is that you do in Biafran, when you are done, you go overseas and scavenge. God knows for how long you're going to be there. If Biafra don't come, some will even die in a foreign land and their body not brought back home if Biafra don't come. Do you understand? Do you understand? You wake up in the morning. You walk in the street of a white man. They look at you. They are so upset. They are angry. They can't understand for the life of them what the hell you are doing in their country. They want you out. They want you gone. But because of civilization, because of democracy, they can't tell you in your face. But they hate you with all passion. Do you know that? When have you sat down with a white man, wherever it is that you are, and have a decent conversation, lengthy conversation? The only conversation you have with, you have with white people is, hey, how's it, man? Hey, 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 done, gone, he's gone, you're gone. Because he doesn't value you. Nobody values you if you are not in your country. Nobody values you if you leave your country and come to their country. Trust me, they don't value you. What the hell are you doing in my country? That is the question they keep asking themselves every time. They've approached me and said to me, Ike, when are you going back home? This is the question they ask me, when are you going back home? Now, I can't get upset with such a question. It is a decent question because they don't understand why I should abandon my own country and come to their own country. Does it mean I don't have a country? This is what Fulani planned for us. This is what they intended for us. And they've succeeded on that one. We are all gone. Scavenging all over the world. And to us, we are happy. <laughs> I know, Benin, we are all over the world. And that is why Mazen Namdekanu said this. Listen to what Mazen Namdekanu said. For those of you who are jumping up and down because they are in overseas. In hunger and in thirst, in nakedness and in need of everything. And I will put a yoke of iron upon your neck. I will destroy you completely. A nation will come against you from afar and from the ends of the earth. As swift as the eagle flies. And they will devour you. A nation whose language English you will not understand. They will destroy you completely. Is your language originally English? But I will, I am the Lord your God. I will destroy you that even your language will no longer know it. So says the Lord of hosts. A nation of fierce countenance which does not respect the elderly. 
Now show favor to the young, like the British, they will come after you, they will decimate you, and they will destroy you. They will not give a damn about your old, they will eat your livestock and produce and leave you none. Everything you have, they are bound to take, and you will have nothing. You will be plucked off from your land, which you go to possess. Even your own land, they will take away from it, and they will take it from you. We are banned from even our own land, isn't it? Why is it? That they will tell you, if you want to come to your land, you have to go through Lagos and through Kanu and Abuja. You can't even come into your own land. They want to discourage you from going back to the land of your ancestors. This is the funniest one. You will be scattered amongst all people. From one end of the earth to another. I will scatter you. Not even among nations, but among people. That is why wherever you go to, won't you find their friends there? It's a curse. Did you hear that? Wherever you go, you will find their friends there. And it's a curse. For you, it's a blessing. I am sick and tired of people shouting, oh, we are everywhere. Everywhere you go, you don't see any Biafran man there. Pack your things and go. And I say rubbish. It's a curse. Is in this is a curse. I will scatter you. Not even among, among people, ordinary people. Wherever there are people, you must be there. It's a curse I've placed upon you. There are some in China, they don't they no longer go back home. And people are very happy living in other people's country because you have no shame. When I used to live in England, I used to feel ashamed all the time. I will go to look for a job that I know I am more than qualified to do. They will say, oh, do it to one reason or the other. They will employ a white person. And somebody will say to me, why don't you write and protest? I say, no, I won't. It's not my country. Anything they like, they can do. Because we lack sense of pride and honor. I will scatter you amongst the peoples of the world. You we are taken. From everywhere to everywhere, and today you are worth nothing. And there you will bow before wooden gods that neither your ancestors have known. The God you were taught to know and love by white people is not the same Chukwabiyama you once worshipped. Everything in Emena is pure rubbish. And I said I will preach this gospel. You know me, I preach the truth. My goodness me, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. As I'm talking to you, I'm reading this uh, post from Ebuka Samuel, Ebuka Samuel on Facebook Live. Just listen to what <laughs> a child of Biafran is saying. Just listen. Just listen, and then you know exactly what is our problem. Ebuka Samuel said, but right now, <laughs> we are the richest people <laughs> in that zoological republic. Go to Lagos. Yorubas have sold everything. They have to Ibos. Abuja too belong to Ibos right now, according to Erufai. Do you hear what somebody's saying? Are you listening to this man? Are you listening to this man? He's talking about people's land. He's not talking about his own land. He's bragging that he owns Lagos. He's bragging that he owns Abuja. Who did this to us? Who did this to us? Who did this to us? Look at what somebody is saying. That they own, <laughs> they own Lagos. That the Europeans are selling everything to them. And then, then they own Abuja. Mbiarambia onewala. I'm asking. Mbiarambia onewala. Isn't that the same thing that happened in Port Harcourt when they declared abandoned property and stole all our things? Till today, did we get it back? Are you telling me because you uh, Yoruba sold all their property to you, Ebuka Samuel in Lagos, now you own Lagos. You, you are now a Lagosian. <laughs> and now Abuja belongs to you. <sighs> May God have mercy on us. May God have mercy on Biafrans. I tell you, if Biafra doesn't come soon, quicker, I don't know what will become of our generation. If Biafra don't come today, 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 I don't know what will become of our generation. I pray that Elohim will release our leader. Grant him freedom that he will be out as soon as possible. If there is any time we need Biafra, it is now. 
lihi na gini ariri ebola anyi ariri ebolo tunwa ariri ebola bia france we have paid the price we have paid and paid and we are still paying in the pool of our blood now it is worth it is systematic extermination of the afran people in their own land in their pool of blood my goodness me when will it stop systematic extermination that is what polani and britain plan for us and they are they are doing it right they are doing it right let me stop here let me stop here. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, great Bia friends, wherever you are. This is Radio Biafra Osa Service 2 coming to you from the platform of Radio Biafra London under the leadership of one and only Onion Du, Mazin Nam De Kano, Ohamadike, one of Biafra land. Mazin Nam De Kano is the only incorruptible leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. He's the director of Radio Biafra and her television. He's the commander of the armies of Biafra, the greatest man living on this planet Earth. And this broadcast is coming to you from me, a servant of the Most High, a servant of the indigenous people of Biafra, and a proud disciple of our leader in the person of Mwa Chineke. Once again, I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, great Biafrans, friends of Biafrans, even the enemies of Biafrans, you are highly welcome. As you know, one thing is for us to press on for the disintegration of this British abominable contraption called the Zoological Republic of Nigeria and for the restoration of the kingdom of God here on earth which is Biafra, longitude zero, latitude zero. They will not let you know that. Keep on adjusting their clock from time to time in order to hide the truth from you. But we are here to make it very clear. We are here to restore the kingdom of God here on earth. It is your duty. It is my duty. We must press on. We must march on. We must move on. Brother, do not look back. Sister, stop complaining. Let us march them head on. The enemies are there. Their intention is to distract you and destroy you. That is all they have in mind. Nothing again. You are the target. Irrespective of how they praise you or you bring you low, you are their target. And at the right time, they will destroy you. But before then, they will use you to make sure that they bring the strength of your people down. And in doing that, they have succeeded and all of us will go down. But God forbid it. He has given us the leader. He has given us a leader who opens our eyes. The wisdom, the knowledge our leader has planted in us will never expire. We will extend it from generation to generation. But for this generation, we must surely restore Biafra. Nothing will stop it. We are not going to hand over this project to another generation. Have it in mind. Always see yourself each time you wake up in the morning as an what? as a sacrificial object that is who you are at this time even if you like it or you don't like it that is what the generation is because those who try to exempt themselves from what we are doing are mostly the people whom they are killing most of the people you see they shot dead and dumped their corpses in fmc the 22 young men they may kill in mn and other places use warning most of these people might not even be be ipop they are just see ordinary Igbo people going about their normal things, but they hit them. So don't say, I will or I will not. Just be there. Do what we ask you to do. Be part of it. Press the button. Move on. March on. Destroy this enemy. If you don't do, it will come to you. And that is the level we are. This is the reason why each time we wake up, we come out, we make sure we encourage you. We put you in order. We pass the information to you to do what you are asked to do, my dear brother, so that this enemy instantly and simultaneously will be crushed in our land. Our leader have prophesied. Forget about the truck loaded of the ginger we so that land will help us in the battle because that is what they want. And we must press on. Today, we have a very special program, as you know, every day, every Sunday, the cross section of our some Asian national coordinator, being led by our able rep, Mazi Oscar Okeke, will lead them, will lead us into a kind of a dis uh, discussion that we always do every Sunday. And I'll ask you to relax and um, listen to this. But before then, let us pray. As I'm led to pray, dear righteous King of glory, we give you praise, we give you glory. Be thou exalted, our Father. Ancient of the day, Lord good Jehovah, you alone is God beside thee. There is no any other God. We worship you. We adore thee. We glorify your name. We lift your name high above every other name because there is none like thee. 
Father, we worship you. We adore thee. Blessed be your holy name, ancient of the day. We roll on the floor. We glorify your name because there is none like thee. And there will never be any. Lord, you alone we will serve. We you alone we will worship. You alone we will adore. The most high God, Chuku Okikabiyama, Ekekero Wanine. We give you praise. We give you glory. Blessed be your holy name, Abba Father. We thank you for everything. We thank you for the life you has given to us, O oh Lord. We thank you for the wisdom, knowledge, the strength, the health, everything you have bestowed upon us. Father, we thank you. Be thou exalted, Abba Father. Blessed be your holy name as we lift your servant, our leader. Mazen nam de kanu before you, ancient of ancient, Jehovah Nisi. We lift him before you, Abba Father, praying against the forces of darkness the enemy might have invoked. Heavenly Father, upon his life, Heavenly Father, we rebuke it to Lord. By the power in the spoken word, Father, we cancel every invocation, attack, whatever spiritually and physically the enemy is planning. Because we know them, what they'll do, what they normally do. Father, we counter it to Lord. Abba Father Jehovah, that it will not come to pass, whatever the plan, Jehovah Jireh, the same way we lift the ESN before you, Abba Father, committing them into your hand there and night, Jehovah Nisi, my Lord and my God. It is through the inspiration of your spirit that they will assemble the Lord, that they will form. The Father, we pray that your spirit will control to guide them, lead them. Oh Lord God, Jehovah, Abba Father, may they defend your land, may they defend your people, Heavenly Father, that this enemy will not accompany accomplish their mission in our land and in our life father strengthen esn there and night to oh lord whatever needed abba father for them to move on jehovah Nisi, let it be given to the glory of your name be thou exalted abba father ancient of the day jehovah Nisi, my lord and my god we commit their friends into your hand abba father all over the globe wherever we scatter jehovah Nisi, praying my Lord and my God, Abba Father, that you protect your people, irrespective of whatever the enemy is cooking, Jehovah Jireh, just as it happened in the land of Egypt. The problem was there, Abba Father, but it was not where the children of Israel we are living, in the land of Goshen, the same Egypt, Jehovah means you protected them. Abba Father, the same way you shield your people all over the world, whatever that is happening, you protect us and guide us to the glory of your name. Lord God, as we continue to speak to the land of Biafra, that this time is the time. Let the power in the land arise, O Lord God Jehovah, at your own command, Abba Father. Just as it happened, the earth opened it and swallowed those who were opposing your prophet Moses. Father, those wicked ones in our land, O Lord God Jehovah, let the same, the same thing happen to the glory of your name. That indeed, these people will know that there is God in heaven. That you, Chukukukabia, Meke Kero Wanile, the Most High, you are the one we are serving there and night. You are the one who asks us to do what we are doing to the glory of your name. Father, do this, and your name, and your name will be glorified. This we pray and believe that thou hast answered as we make this prayer in the beautiful name of your beloved Son, Yeshua Hamashiach. Great dear friends, we have come for today's discussion, and I will now hand the microphone over to our Ebo Asian Rep, Maze Oscar. Okay, okay. Ebo Rep. Yes, thank you very much, Maze. I hope I can. I hope I come back loud and clear. Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, dear friends. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. Depending where you just uh, uh, staying, where you domicile, I say much. Who can bless you, people? And also, uh, without wasting more time, I thank all the lover, uh, lovers of freedom and those people that are supporting IPOP. I say, may Chukoka bless you all. Today is a great day, another wonderful day. We Asia National Coordinators are coming on your way again with the, with the different things we have in stock today, a special place of Chukoka to present and also for us to analyze it and to discuss it and all of us we now come into conclusion with one mind with one heart a way forward because all we are doing is a way forward in a Biafran, uh Biafran struggle so without wasting more time my name is still remain your humble servant Maze Oscar KK by special grace of Chukukika Biyama I hail from Nanka Nanka in Oka province on Ambra Biafran land I also, by special grace of Chukwokika I'm a member of the Director of State, uh, representing Asia. So, uh, also a member of the U.S. 
uh, by special case of Chukuka, and we are here with me with other uh, principal officers, uh, some Asia national coordinators. We are about to introduce ourselves first before we now come back to our what we have in stock for today. Uh, without wasting more time, now we first of all called Mars Charles Opama. Mars Charles Opama, can you hear me? Please, if you can hear me, introduce yourself to the your Biafrans all over the world. Thank you. Thank you, Mazi Oscar Okeke, our Evo Asian uh, rep. I think I am coming out clear. Yes, yes, rather than clear, go ahead. There were, yeah, great Biafrans, I bring you greetings from the island of Formosa, Taiwan. It is a beautiful afternoon here. So I say good afternoon from Taiwan and good morning to those of you in the Holy Land of Biafra. I know you are just waking up and you are waking up to this uh, good life that the good Lord has provided for you with good health. We say may Chukwokika Biafra be praised. And to the lovers of freedom and Biafrans around the world, I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you reside. May Chukwokikabiyama continue to be our strength. Uh, before I proceed, I must introduce myself. My name is Charles Opangwa. Charles Opangwa hail from Item. Item is in Bende District, Omaha Province, Biafra Land. And by the grace of Chukwokikabiyama, I serve the indigenous people of Biafra here in Taiwan as the national coordinators. And I bring you special greetings from the Taiwan family, the formidable Taiwan family. Uh, today we'll be having our meeting as well and ask your people back home if they are part of the family. I will stop here and I will hand over the microphone back to our Asia Rep. Mazi Oscar Okeke. Mazi Oscar is back to you, Ndeo. Thank you very much, Mazi Opangwa. That is a great introduction. Without waste more time, I'm going my heading straight away to Mars, uh, Mars Anthony Wakeze. Mars, Mars uh, Anthony Wakeze, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you on you, see. Go ahead. So this All right. yeah, good morning, great dear friends. From wherever you are, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night and to some of your people, depending on your location. Uh, my name is uh, Anthony Chukwodi Wakeze. Anthony Tukwani Mwakaisa is from Aguler. Aguler is in Anambra East local government, Biafra land. By the special grace of God, I serve the indigenous people of Biafra in Vietnam as a national coordinator. My fellow Biafrans, I just want us to stay tuned because there are some things we learn in Legio Biafra that we cannot learn in the church. For most of us, we go to the church and sit down patiently for two hours listening to sweet stories from from here we give you the raw truth nothing but the truth please i beg all of us to pay attention thank you very much Manzi. that is a very good introduction without wasting more time uh, we also go to our uh, one of our great men here in asia uh, our great presenter uh, Mars Antonio Biro. Mars, please, uh, if you don't mind, uh, introduce yourself to Biafrans and lovers of freedom. Go ahead. Thank you very much, our Evo Rep, Mars Oscar Okeke, and uh, my fellow comrades of the national coordinators that have introduced themselves. Uh, my name is Rimene Mars Obilo Antony, and by the grace of Chukwu Kikabiyama, the national coordinator, IPOB in Malaysia and uh, I'm from Olo in Biafra land. Back, I hand the microphone back to you, sir. Thank you very much, Maz. I really appreciate your handwork. You have been doing uh, 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 very great and marvelous work. I say Mexico can continue to protect you and also giving you the grace and the strength for you to continue and uh, carry on this uh, uh, great work we are doing because it required a lot of momentum and also a lot of uh, strength and endurance and courage to do what you do what you does is not easy at all so i say much we can continue to strengthen you 
uh, without wasting much time, before we now go to the uh, our topic today, I uh, would also like to uh, send my greetings to our leader, Onyen Dumas Nandekano, a great man, Hamadike, one of Biafra, a man that has opened our eyes, a man that has been succeeded in working the spirit of uh, all Biafrans, the consciousness of not only Biafra, the whole in fact, I will not even say uh, in Nigeria, but in Africa as a whole, because a lot of uh, agitation is going on across the globe. It's because of this man that he have done a great work. Our leader, Mazin and Kano, I say he shall live to reap the fruit of his labor, because he have, he, he have done us proud and he continue doing great. So we thank Chukwuka for his life, and also without waste much time, my regard go to our head of the director of state, Master Kedosian, and also his deputy, Master Nizumike, and all the members of the director of state. I say may Chukwuka continue to serve, guide, and protect us, and also all the principal officers that have been working hard to see that this uh, Air France struggle must come to fulfillment. So I say may Chukwuka continue to bless each and every one of us. Especially those people in media, in different Eastern Security Network, and M branch, a, a lot of different departments, even medical and uh, 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 media, a lot, a lot of them. Uh, everyone are doing things towards uh, to ensure that this Biafra legislation is become a reality. I say, may Chukukan continue to strengthen each and every one of us and giving us the wisdom and the grace for us to continue to carry on this work because it's a very big monumental work. Uh, it's when people know we know, people don't know we don't know. It's not an easy work. And I say, Mitchell can continue to guide us and give all the strength. Uh, without wasting more time, there is uh, some issues. Put is a, 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 is a talking point in the Afro land. It's ongoing dilemma, ongoing problem, ongoing issue as we speak in the Afro land. And today we are here to talk about and to discuss about all these issues because there have been a greater allegation going on here and there. And they have a one goal. Janja would have one goal. Their goal is to stop IPOB because if they can succeed to destabilize IPOB, they have won the war. We now being completed to one giant zoological republic. Maybe this one will not be zoological, it will become a one great uh, uh, chimpanzee. But as Chukwuka may have it, all their plan can never work because what we are doing is ordained by Chukwuka Biyama himself. So we bound ourselves, we bound to succeed because it has been written that social time will come and social things will happen. In fact, what we are doing is in time table of Chukwokika. It's a program of Chukwokika Abiyama, not to any man, not to any mother. It's the divine project. And the only people that are mandated by divine way of that Chukwokika Abiyama is people that will prepare this, uh, this platform uh, discussion to the conclu uh, conclu uh, logical conclusion. If you are not destined to do this work, you cannot do it. It's not by strength. It's not by power. It's not by mind. It's not because I'm so qualified. It's not because I'm so educated. It's not that I'm so, uh, I have career in this or that. No, it's not even because I'm a political scientist. It's not because I'm a professor. It's not because I'm that will do this or that. No, not at all. It's because the heaven have mandated you, choose you to come and do this work. If you're not choose for this work, you will not be able to do it. Our leader has been saying this thing, day in, day out, and that is exactly what happened. Because before the earth began, Chukuka had mandated those people that were going to carry this job to logical conclusion. And that is why if you find yourself opportuned to walk to this great work, you count yourself as a lucky. You count yourself as a somebody that Chukuka loves so much. That is why we are doing what we are doing with all our happiness. And I thank Chukuka and with the people that surrounded me. They are men with honor. They are men with the resilience. If they are men with a, with a kind of a mindset to move forward, I think you can for them. And we must continue.
So today, there is a lot of allegations, there is a lot of things are going on in, in the whole zoological republic. When people are talking about the date, the claims in the Biafran land, forceful disappearance. You see a young man, a, a, a very healthy, within a short period of time, the man will disappear. Nobody will. You go and give information to police or wherever. They will look for him, nothing. Uh, weeks, weeks with him, months, months with him, years. You will not see the person again. They claim people at will. Selling clean up people at will. Doing all manner of things at will. Uh, uh, capturing our women, putting them in captivity, raping them at will. They become their slaves, uh, their slaves, sell, sell slaves to them. A lot of evil have been uh, happening. All of us can record what happened in Obi. I'm not here to talk about that one, but I believe my colleagues will have a lot of things to tell you. So a lot of things have been happening. They have killed a lot of people. Even when they abducted these people, forceful abduction, when they uh, abducted these our people, you will never know where they kept them. They will keep them even in military cantonment, secretly, having sexual assault to all these people. A lot of evil they have been doing, and nobody, even when you discover, because one of our, our legal team have discovered such an evil, they, these people will never charge to court, nothing. A lot of evil have been happening. A lot of evil have been happening. Everything that happened today in our place is showing that these people, they are believed they are above the law. You, you do them nothing. Even if you know, you will do nothing. Because they are above laws. Law is on some people. They discard bars. Law is not for them. They are the law by themselves. They decide what they want. They do what they want. And you do nothing. That is why we freedom never be given, it's taken. It can never sit in your house and the, the planning that you will now have with freedom is impossible. That is why today we come to your way again to do justice on what's going on in Biafra land. There is a lot of claims going on in Biafra land. We are here to talk about these claims. Why? Why are so claims, many claims? You know, the road to Biafra Association is very, very short road. If everyone have with the same mindset, the Afghan resolution is very easy one. But because they always imagine, because that because because there is always a support to us, because there is always a greedy men and women, it's a very very big tax. Because this imagine of our own time, these evil men support to us of our own time, they will, will never agree. Their stomach is paramount. To you know that you think of. Even their wife, their children is not paramount. Once they are, can give them money, they can sell anybody. Even their wife, their children, their mother, their father, their relative, their kind, uh, kindred, anything at all, they don't care. They are evil incarnate. They are demonic people. They never have any other thing in mind. They are what always in their mind how they will kill, how they will suck blood, how they will destroy power, 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 always. These are demonic people we have in the land. And this is an agent of foreign uh, agenda weed. That is why today you see the importance because the easiest way to get this Biafra, had they been all the Biafrans in House of Assembly, in Senators, are decided today they want to demand for Biafra and they said they will now resign. We want to live in them. That's the end of the road. Zoological probably don't have any option. It's to give us Biafra. But these people, they will never do. They will not even support us. Rather, they will work hard to stop us. That is, which is exactly what they are doing today. And we are here to talk about these things. We are here to discuss about every claims that is going on in Biafra land. People are dying on daily basis, assassinating men and women every day. People are disappearing. We don't know where they are. Our young men, our young women, what is going on? We are here to talk about these things, and that is why we are here today. So, without wasting more time, I'm going to uh, Mars Opanwa. Mars Opanwa, I just want to uh, call upon you for you to tell us what you think about this continuous claims, assassinating, going on in Biafra land. Men and women are claiming assassinating people, and once they assassinated, they were targeted by people. A lot of evil are going on. They are killing men and women. Why? 
and I want you to tell us what you think about this killings that is going on. And after afterwards, they will turn it. All these killings are made by the Zoological Republic, is Nigerian government, are, and uh, they are politicians. These people that are killing these people. So uh, I'm here to call upon our manager. What do you think about these things? Um, once again, I want to say thank you very much, uh, Mazi, Oscar, Okeke, the able Asia rep, IPOB Asia rep, for the opportunity. I want to thank you for that. Um, concerning your questions and my input about the recent killings in Biafra land, uh, this uh, thing has been going on for quite some time. If we, people who do follow the events, how things has been unfolding back home, you will agree with me that the killings has been ongoing. But recently, it seems that it shifted from different states, and now the focus is in a particular state, which is Anambara State. And the question will be, why is the, why all the recent killings are happening in Anambara State. This is the question a reasonable person should ask first. For you to get to the root of the matter, you must first of all try to find out why and how. Before we do hear about um, a handful of killing in different states, in fact, before Imo State used to be the, it seems to be the battleground, but recently it has shifted to Anambara State. And the question is, why Anambara State? Why Anambara State? And you can agree with me the reason it is common about the fourth, uh, their forthcoming uh, selection or whatever you might call it, you might tag it about their useless uh, every four years doing the same thing. That is the, that is the root, the cause of all this recent killing. And for anybody with, uh, with brain in his core or her score to tag these recent killings to IPOB or ESN, that person must, must get his brain examined. He must get your brain examined. Really, I cannot see any reasonable person tagging all these recent killings, linking it with IPOB or linking it with ESN. IPOB, ESN, Namdekano, 3 and 1, the same. Anybody linking uh, the recent killing to IPOB, the person is making a, a huge mistake. The other day, we heard about the convoy of uh, this uh, House of Rep member from, from uh, Newi South, Newi North, and uh, Ikusigo constituency, uh, Chief Chris Azovogo. He was attacked after he went and decamped from PDP to APC. And on his way home from Oka, back to his base. He was attacked and killed. So what has IPOB got to do with that? What has IPOB got with all these uh, political prostitutes? They are all the same. That is why I don't care about petty. All these people are the same. It doesn't matter which party they are in. Today they are in this particular party, call it whatever thing they call it. The other day they, are, they jump to the other one. The next day they will jump to the other one. They are the same set of slaves. All they are after is how to salvage their stomach, how to steal money, how to pack money, how to, to uh, take advantage of the people. And they do the same thing like a circle. Every four years, they come up and make all their useless promises. So what has IPOB got to do with that? Absolutely nothing. And we also heard about the one that happened around, uh, I think, uh, no, the Navy Road also, whereby the driver was killed and the passengers Abducted those in the in the political uh, vehicle. I mean, this vehicle they used to put the emblem of uh, parties. I don't want to mention any party's name because I so much deserve these people. I don't want to talk about uh, mention any of their political party name. And what has IPOB got to do with that? Ask yourself that question. IPOB is a political. We we don't belong to any political party, and we are not supporting any political party. And all these things going on, you will agree with me that these things are political killings. They are political killings. They keep killing each other. 
you will hear that this particular party killed the other one and the other party will kill the other one if you don't support them they will kill you if you have their secrets and you jump to the other party they will kill you because they don't want you to take that particular secret what they told you in the in their in their secret they don't want you to take it to the other party and that resulted to all this killing that has been going on and on okay what has ipob got to do with the death of uh, cosmos is it nothing not in the man that was killed. It's all politics. And you look at these men that their lives have been taken short. You will agree with me. They're all politicians, except few. And the some of them, now that all these political killings are going on, people are now taking advantage of it to kill other people, to do all kinds of mayhem, and they will like try to cover it and say, oh, I be OB. They will just do this, and before you know it, I be OB. Before you will say uh, ABC counts to the ABC read to D, you know, oh, I be OB without no investigation. What are their targets? What do they have in mind? They wanted to give a dog a bad name before hanging it. You give a dog a bad name before you hang the dog. This is their game, but we are smarter than them. We are a million yards smarter than them. We know what they are doing. And you can agree with me that IPOB has nothing to do with this. The governor of uh, Anambra State, he opened it, he said, no, remove IPOB from all this killing in Anambra. The chief security officer of Anambra State, Willie Obiano, he said that. It's on news there. Google it and you will read it by yourself. Remove IPOB has nothing to do with this. Not only that, okay, the other uh, one of the spokesperson of uh, one particular political uh, camp uh, political campaign manager to Andy Uba in their party, he also said that, uh, Mr. what's his name again, Mr. Victor Gene, he said it, that IPOB has nothing to do with this, that this is, all oh, these are political killings. So anybody coming up to say IPOB did this, IPOB killed this person, IPOB do that, ESN did this, ESN did that. No, ESN have no hand in, it, in all this kind of dirty job they are doing. If you want to find where ESN is, you go to our bushes and forests. There you will find ESN. There you will find the able men that left their family, left their mother, left their wives and children. They are there defending our territory. They don't want to be overcarried by what is going on with all these politicians. They are there. Why do you fight each other, killing politics and this, trying to tag ESN? Why ESN, they are busy in our bushes, protecting our farmlands, keeping the inventors away, the ginger weeds that do rape our mothers, our sisters, and destroying our farmlands. That is the job of ESN. They are there pursuing those people. They are there stopping those people from coming into our land. They are there protecting our territory. ESN, they don't walk on the streets. Yes, they don't walk on the streets, I repeat. They know their job and they are doing their job very well. And about the one they killed, uh, this gentleman, the wife, uh, the, 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 the husband of uh, uh, late uh, Dora Akunili, Maze, Dr. Chike Akunili. Immediately it happened. The, within within minutes, not up to an hour, the brother just sent a message. Just like somebody, they, they send the test. Okay, the deal is done. Now post. Bam, he goes, uh, IPOB, why did you kill my brother? IPOB has nothing to do with the death of Dr. Chike Akunili. Nothing at all. Even when the late Dora Akunili was alive, may her soul rest in peace, our leader supported her. Mazin Namdekano supported her. Our leader stood by her. And IPOB in general, we supported her because of her courage, uh, her braveness, and how courageous she was. Then how can we come back to do such? No, no, no. There are things you don't even talk about. There are things when people say it, you look at them again, do these people have anything in their skull at all? Oh, after they go and smoke all these things, they smoke and drink all these things, they drink, they come outside and start making noise. But thank God that the brother to the late uh, Dr. Chike, within also a few hours, come up and make another post saying, oh, IPOB has nothing to do with this. Maybe his eyes must have been open. 
there are issues. You watch the video of the man talking about issues, people that betrayed their family, people that did something against him that he has forgiven. The pe people are not even looking at those key points that he mentioned in his video during his 70th birthday. People are not even taking time to digest the video and watch it and see where the man mentioned about betrayers, people coming after him, people he has forgiven that goes against him and his family. So those that are working all this day and night, I mean the DSS killing people, tagging IPOB, they have failed even on arrival because we are too smarter than them. The other day they killed people along uh, uh, along uh, Nobi, Nobi. After they killed people, thank God that somebody saw them and did the video and he was saying it, shouting it to the world. DSS just killed somebody here. DSS just did this. DSS just shot people here. And our people doesn't want to take this serious. If you want to know those that are doing this dirty job, I can tell you, to point your point, uh, to point your fingers at the DSS, the Nigerian security, the Nigerian secret police. They are the ones doing all these dirty jobs, working for the politicians. It's like pay as you go, the highest bidder. How much are you paying? Who is going down? And we are here to stop them. We are here to tell the world the truth. Every dear France must be alert wherever you are. You must open your mind. You must be at a lot to defend this noble, great family. Because what they are doing, they are trying to pitch the majority of Biafrans against IPOB. And if they succeeded in doing that, they will create a war within ourselves. IPOB versus Biafrans. On the versus IPOB will start fighting the war where they will take that time to surround and take over our land. My people, I say, wake up. It is time to wake up to fight this Janjaweed. It is time to wake up and tell them they cannot deceive us with all these their lies. Mazi Oscar KK, um, if I continue to pour my mind about all these uh, recent killings and all this cover up they are doing, I mean, time will fail some of my colleagues that are here that will also love to make their own input. Therefore, I would like to pause for now and hand over the microphone to you. And I'll still come back again to elaborate more in on this and other topics that we will discuss. I will hand you over the microphone. Okay, thank you very much, Maze. Opanwa, that is a well uh, and well spoken. Uh, you know, it's very, 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 very annoying by our people, uh, uh, people we're supposed to protect, and those people we turn around and saying, people we're now fighting for them to have liberation, for them to have a freedom, for them to enjoy their rights. They will now turn around and say that we are killing them. How can we kill you while we are now working, depriving ourselves a lot of things to, in order to protect you? It's very, very, a very, very crazy thing for us to think some, such, a, such a thing. Because we cannot be uh, protecting you, fighting for you, fighting for your survival, fighting for, uh, for, for, for your freedom, for your liberation. At the same time, we now embark in killing you. It's not possible. Let me make this thing very, very clear for Biafrans and lovers of Biafran. Because I know today is Sunday and most of them are staying in the home, uh, preparing or they are staying in the head. There is something I want to make it very, very categorically clear here. Our colleagues have said it, but I want to brought just a bit again before I go to under uh, police to go and speak. First of all, we have Eastern Security. Eastern Security was inaugurated by our leader, Mazin and the camp. And they have a defined work they are doing. Their work is to protect our farm land, to protect our land. We are like our Mazin, like for sale. When you go to bushes and the forest, you will find our Eastern Security net, uh, Network there. You will find the men and women working hard to protect our, life, our land. Then there is another group of people we don't know who they are. People call them in, 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 a, in a short distance, uh, uh, unknowing gunmen. We don't know who they are. We don't know where they come from. But one thing is certain. The, these people have also have a defined work from every, from since these people uh, men and women uh, rose up in Biafra land. We have seen them killing uniform people, 
doing more of things, a concern uniform people. We never hear they even go contrary to civilian. Even some videos we are watching because the way you people are watching that is we are is the way we're watching watching the video because we don't know where they who they are. We don't know where they come from. But we, we know that they are fighting for masses. That is why you will see them. They will uh, all those uh, police uh, checkpoints in the Biafra land, the current people uh, doing things on their way. They will come and attack them. When they finish this work, people masses will be hailing them, telling them you are doing well. Because they're not attacking uh, uh, people. All of a sudden, political uh, killers will now rise up, begin to kill people at will. And the people will now, any human being, very, very having sense, will now target it to IPOD. It's very, very insane something. I never see such a thing. It's a very crazy something someone will be, could even imagine. How can we fight him for your liberation, fight him for a good life, fight him for a good future? Fighting for unborn children, we now turn around and claim you again. How could it be possible? Men and women, they, they are arrested during the people and the many places. IPOB have been spending millions upon millions upon millions of millions of naira. Burying men and women, even people are Biafra now, even people are IPOB now, not IPOB. We have been burying them. Our leader has been made it a point of duty. People in our old people, are they IPOB? No! But the IPOB are paying money and they are releasing many of them. So how can we turn around people that we meant to protect and we not turn around and clean them? It's a very, very hard thing. So anybody that you say that IPOB are clean people, watch that person. That person might be a sample. a paired agent. Well, anywhere you are, somebody tell you that IPOB are clean innocent people. Look that person well. That person might be an agent of darkness. Because there is no way we are now protecting people. People we are protecting, we now turn around and claim the same people at the same time. It's impossible. So all this is you see going on, like our, our Chris Lightfoot said, is a political killers. It's a political assassinators. They impair them job for go and claim people. And we must be careful. Without waste more time, let me go to our uh, uh, to our, one of our Chris, uh, our Ebo presenter. Because we want to hear what you have and see taking this uh, ongoing claims that are going on in Biafra land. We want to hear what you have to tell us and tell all of us of Biafra about this ongoing claims in Biafra land. Um, Mazo, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. When you say I can hear you loud and clear. Thank you very much uh, for this uh, wonderful presentation we are doing today to make it very clear to the world and our people what is going on the sinisters that the enemy has created in order to use it to rubbish our name dear friends we must understand what is going on very very important we must understand just so yesterday there is a video a woman was crying with a child or a husband or a boy in a pool of blood i don't know some of us might have watched that or have not uh, but it came to my desk and i watched it that was yesterday uh, I can't remember the particular village where that thing happened. The woman herself was shouting and crying, telling people that it was the soldier. They were patrolling within that area, and they, they saw the guy is just a young man. They shoot him and leave the woman to go. And the woman was crying. It's either that should be his son or husband or whatever, because we can't see the face very well to identify uh, um, the age of the person. These things are example of what is going on. This is our example of what is going on. Every killing that is going on in Biafra land today, whether in Ambaranyimo or any other part, is being done by Nigerian government. They must hold, be held responsible. We must know that. Who killed the 70 something dead body in FMC? Today, over 70 something dead body is in FMC and they are threatening if you don't come and take all this dead body, that they are going to organize and conduct a mass burial. Who killed them and dubbed them there? Have they ever asked the mortuary attendants who brought this dead body here? Any autopsy that have done on them to bring out the bullet in their body to check it, investigate where that bullet come from? Nobody. Uh, dear friends, we must forget about what the newspaper, Nigerian newspaper is saying or all these uh, uh, political uh, criminals are jumping up and down just to make sure that they fix themselves in one place or the other in the upcoming number election and order to in order also as well to gain more favor from the federal government 
forget about them this is what they are just planning to do and on that process they decide to do whatever they wish they are the one killing themselves and i pray they should continue to kill themselves i don't pity them that is how i behave my let them continue to kill themselves because the problem in the land they are the one who cause it all the whole money made to repair everything these criminals pocket it but when problem will come they will try to push it to still remain a cent they are the one killing themselves using the police using the military with the one they have mixed with al shabab and their whoever whatever boko haram repented de-radicalized they are the one conducting this nuisance killing all this killing that is going on why suddenly because the election is coming close in anambra why sudden the the, the, the killing start why before it was in Imo state as a result of we understand what happens there with the the, the so-called uh, um uh, uh, administrator that the flan installed there why suddenly because they are this particular party have seen that the, the other party maybe they are waxing strong they, they they are trying to take over they may win the election or whatever they decide to do what they have been doing before political assassination didn't start today just as uh, i read the uh, uh, statement of uh SZF, if you blame IPOB of this one, what of the other one that have been happening? These are the things our people should look into. And that is why we encourage you, keep on advising you to listen to Radio Biafra. Stop paying attention to nonsense. These are the same people that could not repair your primary school, your secondary school, the school that is dilapidated. The same people is telling you this thing and you are listening. The same people that could not give you hospital. But when they are sick, they will go to abroad. Take that money, give to white people. They are the one telling you all this thing and you are paying attention. Listen, if we don't wake up now to tell them the truth that they are the one doing this thing and hold them responsible to bear the consequences, they will continue. Their intention is just to jam us because they have seen that their, their, their plan, as they agreed by the uh, uh, federal government to bring uh, Fulani Hessmen into our land to give them land for Ruga so that they will be given political appointment. They have seen that this thing is not working. The establishment of ESN put a stunt over it instantly. They couldn't uh, advance anymore. ESN is in the forest till today. As I'm talking to Conran, Conshine, defending our mothers in the farm, defending our land. So as these criminals, this political criminal in Igbo land, that I'm advocating for their own execution, as they executing, killing innocent people. They are the one, as they see that ESN has put stunt towards that. That is why they start all these things. In order to do what? To join our head together, to jam us together. Then you will be against your brother. You will get, be against IPOB. You will be against ESN. For what reason? Just because of their political interests. Dear friends, we must have the understanding our eyes are supposed to open. We're supposed to reason beyond what you see in NT or AIT or your punch newspaper or wherever. You're supposed to go beyond that. The same people, the same person who could not make your life good, who refused to pay you salary. Since dollar is increasing in the zoo, why is it that they are not increasing your salary? The same 30 or 40,000 naira you are receiving, whereby the dollar is going high, targeting 600 to 1,000 naira per dollar. But they have not. The same people that did this do you think they will ever think anything good for you i want to make it very clear to us based on the fact we have gathered the killing that is going on in uh, uh, biafra land is being done is it in daily post i saw the the the, the i saw the headline news there is by obiano obiano came out and said the truth that the killing in uh, anambra state is um uh, is done by politicians uh, if i can see that particular post now i will just read it out he said it was in daily post or daily trust i saw that headline news it was the governor of alhambra state that said it so we need to understand what these people are doing and the worst part is that they will use you against your own brother in order to achieve their aim remember that they have the money and they are still in political power political uh, seat of power they can change anything at any time and the people like you will listen to them but we are here to debunk all these things to make it very clear to each and every one of us those in diaspora and those at home that the killing that is going on in biafra land precisely in anambra state now the hands of the federal government is there and the Igbo politicians remember that they are clueless they don't care they're very rude they can do whatever at will to make sure 
that they do what they achieve their interest they have been doing it they have been doing it even the late uh, um the, the husband of the late dora Kunyuni, we are talking about dora Kunyuni herself they are the one who, who poisoned that woman is our is our Igbo politicians some people don't know so these are the things we'll be using to to let you know that indeed their hands in every evil atrocity that is going on what is the sin of our leader Mazin Namdekan? Are they not the one? These criminals you're seeing now, they are the one who gang up to contribute that money overnight to give to Kenyan government. Dear friends, it's time we understand what is going on. Do not listen to this criminal. Rather, when you see them, stone them. They are the evil you are binding and casting as today's church now. You go and bind and cast them. The demon you have bind them finish. The physical demon is those politicians. They are the one constituting nuisance they are the one engaging uh, 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 coordinating this uh, political assassination that is going on just for their own political interests thank you very much uh our able rep i hand the microphone back to you thank you very much Maz. Uh, I, I totally agree with you there are demons and lucifers we are seeing uh, 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 nowadays because when we cast them and buy them the real one is the one that facing us looking at our face Telling us uh, every year, every four years, they are recycling their demonic people. They are corrupt things. But we must say, on. we're not here to talk about those evil men because they are full of evil. But what we stated uh, from them is when they will do their evil, they will not take responsibility for what they have done. They just target it to IPO, IPO, evil people. It shall never be well with them. Uh, without waste more time, let me go to our uh, man's uh, Anthony. Uh, Marquez, uh, please, what do you say uh, uh, intake in what is going on in Anambra State, especially in the Afrian land, these claims? Go ahead, Mars. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Mars. Okay, okay. I want to use this opportunity to say thank you for what you are doing, because uh, you are doing a great job. And I want to say thank you to our presenter, Mars. Thank you very much. And I want to say thank you for, to all my fellow comrades, those that are here with us and those that are at home listening. I say, may Chukwu Kabyam grant us all our wish. Na ha Chukwu Kabyam makayeba jise. Maazi Oscar Keke, there's nothing too much about uh, this thing because I believe uh, we are no more children anymore. We can identify poured water and the water that comes from rain. No, 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 I am a millisolizo, Malanka was a I hope you understand me. And I'm saying very big thank to all the all the beer friends all over the world. I thank you because uh, we are moving. We are moving forward. We are moving forward, and I thank you, everyone. Thank you everyone for all the compliance, all the things we are doing. It's because uh, God said that uh, this is the time for us to have Biafra. That Biafra will come in this our generation, and just like our leader said before here, count yourself worthy if you're one of them that was chosen by heaven to do this work, because it's not a uh, an easy something. So concerning the killing in our land, the Afra land, Anambra precisely, I must say that, uh, just like I said, that now we can identify poured water and the water that comes from rain. And I believe a lot of people can identify it to even children. So these people, they are fooling themselves. First of all, what is the cause of uh, unknown government? That is what we'll be thinking for ourselves before we label anybody any bad name. Unknown government, I believe now those are people that SAS, Nigerian authorities, Army, Navy, have maltreated because Nigeria is a lawless country. Because Nigeria is a lawless country. They have done a lot of atrocities against families, against husbands, against sons. So, 
No need because uh, most of us, we are not children anymore. And I believe uh, this story I want to say, all of us know about it. The beginning of uh, unknown government, what caused unknown government? In the other hand, what is the real unknown government? We all know them because the Bible says by their fruit, we shall know them because they are fighting for masses. And they are be because they are very angry the way Nigerian government treated their family or themselves. Some of them are those that luckily escape from prison or some of them are those that luckily somebody come and bail them though it's only in nigeria that police will keep you in their custody for four or five years no trial so that is where the unknown government emerge from and when you see unknown government the real unknown government in the streets they relate with people because people know what they are doing and people are happy with them so my brothers, let us not be fooling ourselves or anywhere talk for come from, we listen about the talk. Anywhere suggestion come from, we follow the suggestion. I believe we don't grow. Honestly speaking, we don't grow finish. So that is where the unknown government starts. And what is their mission? Their mission is to avenge for the security men that wronged them or wronged their families before. That is their mission. So all this new model of a or new version of a non-government, some people will just come out from bush, shoot gun anyhow. That one is open. Everybody know that uh, is from Nigerian government. There's no two ways about it. And mbo abrozi mbo ega abu mili no anu neyukuye mbo bo bo di ziyaka ina akuja akuja wo neyukuye. Is DSS Politi uh, political talks? They are the one killing people anyhow. I'm sorry to sound this way because some people may, may feel uh, why is he saying like this? Because he's not the one that that was killed, or he's not his brother. No, my brother, we are dead already. Honestly speaking, we are dead already. If you are called by Elohim for this job. You yourself, you know that you are dead already. But I'm saying this for us to wake up. When you see a toe jumping slowly, go and kick him, you give him a lift. Honestly. These people, they know IPOB is very strong because they cannot penetrate IPOB. And they cannot shake our, shake our foundation. What they did now is that any trust agent will bring out, they want to capitalize on it. Or you are use advantage of our, of our instruction or our laws concerning our struggle to intimidate us. Everybody knows that I believe if we Igbos, we Igbos, we know ourselves, we Biafran, we know the kind of heart we have. We are the children of God. We don't keep people like that without reason. We cannot carry machete or guns, start shooting people anyhow. So we know these people, and we know that is their tradition, that is their culture. So I'm a Milizole, just like I said before. They use this thing. These killings in Anambra State now to label IPOB or to give us a bad name. And I know because, and that, that makes uh, some of the polit politicians, they withdraw their uh, rally or political campaign or whatever they want to do. I know if let for we be Afran because of the conscience we have, because of the way they train us and our nature. We cannot keep people like this. If IPOB go out to stop people or to enforce the seat at home or no election in Anambra State, we cannot keep people the same way these people clean and everybody. And by then, our politicians will say, oh, don't mind them, we know them. Or we know how to do deal with them. That is what they will be telling their slave masters. But these people now, because they think they want to give us bad name, they come and they are the one enforcing the law for us. I'm sorry to say this. Because our leader said this before. He said they will kill us and we will kill them after this Biafra will come. That is the killing. And he, the day our leader mentioned this thing, he said he's very sorry for those that are, will die. He salute their spirit. 
And when you listen to that bro uh, broadcast that day, you know that he's very, very sad in spirit. And he told them that there's nothing he can do to stop the death. It must surely come to pass. After that, we'll have our freedom. They are my brothers. There must be a sacrifice. So we should not be listening to people talking about IPOB, kill this, IPOB, kill that. They came late. And those that want to kill people just to tag us bad names, people are helping us. Honestly speaking, the Afra is speedily coming. All of us have seen it in spirit. God have confirmed it. So all brothers even Zizo, you people came late. There's nothing you can do to stop Biafra. Nothing any man can do to stop Biafra. And I try to tell my Biafran people, please, there's a word I used to say. How can we be sitting down? This will become and clean us. Now they use strategy to start assassinate, assassinating prominent men in Igbo land. And useless people are saying it's IPO. People are just saying for nothing because people don't wake up. People's eyes don't open. Honestly speaking, people's eyes don't open. So whatever you say, you say it. Even if they are afraid of you, that they will not say it in your presence. When you go, they go to their room. They say, we know what happened. Because all of us know how ESN operates. ESN is not in the streets. They are in the bushes. Defending our land against terrorists. So, my fellow dear friends, we have to change our dance there because this will have changed the, the style of the music or the beating of the music. So, we have to follow them. Everybody has to be prepared. This one is not a IPOB only. No IPOB or IPOB. No. If they see you, you look like these people, they just shoot you. And if you watch out now, most of them are going this operation with Siena because they say I, I, unknown government go with Siena. If you go to most Nigerian uh, checking point where army used to stay, you see they have another Siena, they pack one side. Because they are Nigerian government, they can have about 10 plate numbers. No one has the authority to ask them questions. And if they want to do this evil work, they use those Sienna, that plain Sienna, different color. They can change the non banner that's what they do. So it's open, and I believe the whole world is listening to us, but we cannot continue. We must do something on our own. I used to ask people, so if there is nothing like in them, they can, we cannot fight for our freedom. Let us change our strategy. Try to help yourself. Don't say it, uh, we are saying this thing because we are not in the field or whatever. These people are coming. They want to kill everybody. They have mapped out Nigeria just like the way in the, in the village you call some people to clear your land. The person will say, yeah, we start from here, clear this here. Start from here, clear. That's what they do. They have mapped out Nigeria. They clear us like a bush. When they finish Southern Kaduna, they come to the, those ones, they don't chop the finish. Very soon they will come. That is their plan. And we cannot stand like this every time we are lamenting, shouting. ESN cannot do every work for us. Our leader has built ESN in everybody. Start doing something on your own. Let men enter bush. Start cutting trees from now. Please. Up even in Ghana, Banavan is not everything that we can tell you in Radio Biafra. We say it wrong here because it's our own. We cannot say like that in Facebook. And that's why our leader tell you that this is the only place you can hear the truth. My brothers and sisters, we cannot remain like this and waiting to these people to come and kill us. Every day we are shouting. Do you people want us to be like Southern Kaduna people? Every day they load them in the truck and they are just shouting, their women are shouting. They are doing nothing tomorrow. They will go and kill them again. Load them in the truck. We cannot be like them. We are the origin of mankind. We are the Ndibo, Ndibo, the ancient people. That is whom we are. And we are not the people that people can de defeat anyhow. Please, my brother, you have to wake up. Anyhow you can wake up, please wake up. I'm boiling. Thank you. Well, thank thank you. you very much, man.
<laughs> Thank you very much. I, I I totally agree with you, especially when you say what give back to is uh, what give back to on knowing government UGM. What give back to, to it is an end such. I think all people can agree with me uh, what caused end such and what Nigerian government responded to masses Nigerian youth. People are having peaceful protests in Lekki and every other place in Lagos, Lagos City, Nigeria. But what these people are, are got in return from Nigeria government is to send down uh, a Nigerian soldier, like in a war front. They shooting them with light bread, killed people in hundreds. Even the, 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 the most annoyed part of it that when they finish this killing, they will dump the dead body to lagoon. They have no respect to human beings. They have no respect for uh, dead bodies. These people are cowards, to be honest. They dump their dead body in lagoon. People that are opportune, they even find their dead bodies. And they're still denying it. Even when you bring video, when they shoot on life bullet, and many people that are gone down, they're still the, uh, denying it. This is what gives birth to unknowing government. After this thing, many people are decided to uh, avenge the death of their loved ones. That is what gives birth to unknowing government because our people are very selfish and our people are short memory. So when you see Tulu really unknowing government working, UGM, they never go for civilians. They never go for men and women of society. They have they know people they have problem with, and those people is men on uniform. They go after them, they confront them, they harm or hurt them, they harm them. This is people that they are, they are facing. So when you see the two UGM, they never fight civilians. It never happened. So whenever you come, they like uh, what uh, our um, uh, presenter said here uh, uh, yesterday. He, he saw the new video where they shot a, a young man dead, or, or someone like uh, his mother, or maybe wife, or or, or something like that, are crying, crying. Why this danger with soldier? Remember, anybody you see in uniform in Zoological Republic in Biafran land is a uh, ninety-five percent Boko Haram. I seen it and I can prove it. Because they, for years, they have been busy absorbing, incorporating so-called Boko Haram repentance into, into Nigerian military. So now, when these people they absorbing it and incorporated, uh, incorporated this uh, so-called repentant Boko Haram, they absorb them into Nigerian security, into Nigerian Navy, uh, what uh, uh, Navy uh, uh, soldier, military, even police. They send them, purposely send them to Biafran land. Somebody that you know this person is a terrorist. So when you see a young man in Biafran land, look around, they will shut that person dead immediately. So, and this is a certain people, unknowing gunmen is going after them. Once they see them patrolling or stay session in one place as usual, if they're not busy killing our people, what they will be busy is collecting money from our people. When they see a young girl that is pretty, they will force that person to enter car and take that person again away. All this is what we are happening on daily basis in our land. Yet, we, do, we are not war. We are not to officially declare war. Even in a country that you say they have officially declared war, the number of people are dying is very limited to compare what is going on in the Zoological Republic, where it is not officially declared war. So tell me. So I agree. So for you to know, when you go to your Facebook, your Instagram, go to Twitter, begin to gossip, for you to know UGM, what give birth to UGM? You know, it's, it's, it's the same federal government that gives birth to unknowing government. But what is going on in, in Biafran land is exactly planned by federal government. I want to give this inf information again. What is going on in, in Biafran land is a planned, well orchestrated by an Nigerian government to kill all prominent men in Biafran land with able men, able men to kill them silently before they will reach their full heart. 
but I watch you walk a car gamma is stronger than them. Their plan is a on daily basis, they will go into villages. Once they see a woman, they will gun them. You know, if they are if the opportunity, they will take the body and go through it in, in a in ocean or what we are ever or ocean or river. If they're not opportune, they will leave the body. So when people are saying they say hey, it's maybe it's on unknown government. No, it's Nigerian federal government is sponsoring all this evil. We must understand it. We must understand all this evil. Because I cannot tell me this thing keep on happening on a daily basis, and yet they never identify people. And somebody, I think in a, 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 a South Carolina, if I'm not mistaken, someone then caught someone, a man with I think 55 years old, is a, a terrorist. They are asking who is his sponsor. He mentioned LO5, Governor LO5 of Carolina. And these people are never bothered to go and investigate such a very, 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 very big allegation. And after this man made it very open that who is sponsoring them is a governor of I, and the people are looking at it as nothing happened. But they will, they will have every other city to go after the IPOB, said IPOB is this, IPOB. Is this. But the same girlfriends and so called politicians. They never deem it fit to ask why this bandit, they call it bandit, they call it kidnappers, they never call, uh, tag them terrorists. Why? Say or not. But because we speak with on radio Biafra, because we tell them truth, they condemn us, said we are this, we are that, we are terrorists, we are this, prescribe us, whatever, whatever, whatever they want to prescribe. But the people, the disabled men and people are sponsoring disabled to go and reach that man. Even some governors, some ministers in the Republic. public, we have every evidence to show that these people are confirmed sponsors of these stories, yet they're not deemed uh, fit to prosecute them. How can they prosecute them? They are the Okabas that controlling the Zoological Republic. That is why we must do something, as our uh, uh, Mazi said, Mazi uh, 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 Anthony. So I really thank you for that. But I have one question to ask. If this thing are going on, I think. Is now done on us, we be our friends, to be more watchful. Because what is going on, it seems like uh, it's not like uh, it's totally, uh, it's, it's now apparent that they claim prominent men in the African land and also able young men and women. And it, this is their plan. Now, I want us to now listen. What are we going to tell Biafrans for them to be more watchful, to be to be Biafrans to be watchful? Because that even in the, in the Bible says that you play and watch, play and watch, play and watch. You will not only pray, but after that you pray. You must also watch. So today I want us to deliberate on another topic that says Biafrans be watchful. Because we are not only aware of what is going on in, Bia, in Biafra land. You are now aware that the trends that is going on, but you also you need to be watchful. Because when you are now aware that you are not watchful, you will now fail a victim. I hope Biafrans are listening to me and lovers of Bia, uh, uh, freedom and the uh, Biafrans in this world. There is urgent need for we Biafrans to be watchful. We now are aware of we now are aware of what is going on in Biafra land. They are claim people and target IPOD. We now already know we have already the bunk distance. But there is also urgent need for us to be watchful because they are targeting prominent men in Biafra land. When they kill somebody like a, an academia, like a, somebody that is a wizard in medicine in the medicine field. Well announced doctors kill them. You cannot, these people is people is very, very human being. You cannot see them day by day. They are very unique people with a unique talent. When they claim these people and claim men and women, rich men and women, you cannot be able to get this type of people too easily. But this is well planned and coordinated. And that is why there is urgent need. If you're a businessman, you need you must be watchful when you go and watch your back. Check your communication before you go out. Check the where you are going because there is urgent need for us to be watchful. Now is not because you are a professor, 
you are also target. Whether you are IPOB, you are also target. You are level one father, you are also target. You are actually shop, you are also target. You are young men with a very, uh, you are pretty uh, uh, girlfriends, pretty girl, young girl, you are also targeted. You are young man, or every man in Biafra land, you are also targeted. Because this is planned to kill them people at random, those prominent men, those men that can speak, those men that can stand, they that is well orchestrated to kill all of them. And we must stand, we must be watchful be watchful because if we pray we watchful and do do the needful when the enemy will come in 10 miles away we already see him and we now take a position we take cover but if you are not watchful you will become a victim and we don't want any of our people to become a victim that is why we send them this note and i also i want our my christian to tell to uh, give them give me their intake on about their the need their must also be watchful especially people Biafra name in Biafra land. That is urgent need for us to be watchful. Very, very watchful. Observe our areas. If you are in the villages, when the strange faces come, don't say it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No, go out and ask questions. Who is this people? Call some people. Who is this people? You see the strange faces in our in our community. Who is this people? What are they what are they coming here to do? Make inquiry. Be a good observant. Not you doing things, ah, you are a yeah, I don't care. Ah, if I if I can be able to read it, all, all our problem already solved. No, don't say like that. You must be watchful. When you go in and do you listen some noise, take your corner, look very well. What is going on? We must be watchful for us not fairly victims to these people because they are with, they are already well planned to kill our people, kill our people in mass. Eliminating our people one by one, and these men are prominent people. When you eliminate these men, prominent these people, they cannot re replace them immediately. There is a man and woman that is very unique. Their their talent is very unique. They are very very generous. They cannot bring them again to life very easy. Some people will will take a decade. Some people will take a century before you have somebody like that again. And we must protect them. This is perfect. We must protect them. That is why we must be watchful. So, without wasting more time, let me go to Mars. Please, I need you to tell Biafrans the need. Biafrans in Biafran land must be watchful. Not only Biafran in Biafran land, please also BIPOB and Biafran in diaspora. There is urgent need for us to be watchful. Be mindful people we are talking to. Because the zoological public have spent a lot of huge amount of money to assassinate our people here and there. Any people they see that this person who is one of people, key people, or they see it as a kind of a threat, they will kill that person. Biafra France, even in Biafra France, in this place, we must be watchful. So, Mas Opangwa, please, I want to, uh, uh, your intake on this, the need for Biafra France to be watchful. So, go ahead, Mas Opangwa. Thank you very much. Thank you once again, Mazi, Oscar, Okeke, the Asian, uh, IPOB Asia rep, for the opportunity once again. Um, you, you asked a question. You said my input about Biafrance being watchful. Well, anyone that is not watchful at this point in time, you will have, the person will have he or, he or herself to blame. In Igbo uh, adage, they say it goes this way. Onye chine chene chone you cannot just say, oh, God is with me. Then you go and lay on the rail track and shout, God is with me. No matter how loud you try to be or how you continue to raise your voice with your God is with me, <laughs> the rail will crush you. The, the train will just crush you there. You must protect yourself. You must be watchful. Uh, today is Sunday, back in Biafra land, most people will go to church, their places of worship to pray. I am not in or against any religion. Uh, but going to church to pray...
is not just enough. Asking God to protect you is not just enough. Asking God to guide you is not just enough. God has given us the grace. He has given us the ability to discern and the ability to act and know what to do and when to do it. Dear friends, must be very, very watchful. Because the enemies we are fighting, they are not sleeping. They are awake day and night, trying away all they could do in order to eliminate us from the face of the earth. To start with, we know that the government of the Zoological Republic of Nigeria, they started by tagging a flag-waving agitators. I mean, we wave only flag and go to the street to protest. No weapon at all. No nothing. And they killed the, the, in fact, before even the killing started, they started killing, doing all they can, uh, trying to suppress us. They fell. And they tag the IPU with the tag. Oh, these people are terrorists. People with flag, people with no weapon, people with no ammunition, people with nothing, only with flag. And if a government can do that, if the government can go to that length, you know that that government can do anything possible to erase the name of any member of this uh, particular group or the name of any member of IPOB, any IPOB family member, they will do anything possible to erase their name on the face of the earth. They did not stop that. They start their justification of the terrorist tag that they gave to us, which the world, the whole world, no, no other country recognized that except only in the zoo. Normally, when countries tag any society or any group a terrorist organization, the world powers, the world organization will put that in record. But because the world leaders sees the Nigerian government as people without any reasoning faculty, no country in the world recognizes that they are useless tag. Not at all, because IPOB exists in more than 100 countries in the world and has continued to grow. But without missing what dear friends must be careful, the disappearance of dear friends, I mean, when it came into limelight, I mean, when it comes to like it bloom, like boom, no longer the way it used to be, not like taking one person and trying to kill the person or put the person in jail or something. In October last year, 2020, October 2020, after the NSAX protest, we found out that the government now devised another means of eliminating their friends. It started in River State, in Obibo, precisely. The little Hitler, what's that his name? The one that is now crying and saying Nigeria is not one. When we told him ahead of time, he did not buy into that. I know, Maze, these people sometimes I don't like, they don't want mentioning their name. It's not just for reference only. Because these people, I wonder, what kind of mind, what kind of brain do they have? You see this man, he started kidnapping Biafrans in Obiwo. About a thousand dear friends were kidnapped, were adopted in Obibo. And the worst of it, that they would kidnap these people, some of them, they gave narrative, they narrated what happened. Some said, oh, I was coming back from work, a lady, and they just push her, a vehicle stop, and they push her inside. They said, you're, you're a terrorist, you're a this, you're a ESA, you're a IPOB, and that. And they keep taking our youths, young ladies, old men, they pick them on the streets, they disappear. And they try to hide any trace. But because we are children of Chukwu Kikadiyama, the God that knows the hidden, and the God that revealed all things, it came to light that most of our people were taken to Sulejah prison, some to Kebi prison, and they started tracking our people. At first, we thought uh, they were like about uh, 200. From there, they discovered, they would say, oh, they, uh, we, we were about 400 in this place, and they take another group to the other place. And with that, about a thousand plus Biafrans were discovered in different prisons in 
in different prisons across the zoological republic of nigeria how on earth will you pick a young man with no offense you did not take the person to court and you travel and take the person to another state far far in the north i mean you drove different you drove hours 10 hours on the road some of them were even taken in uh, in, in 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 jet military jet some of them were taken by military jet from obi -Ibu. do you know how much it cost for a trip for military jet to go from uh, abuja to port harcourt and then from there back to abuja go and check it at least it cost at least hundreds in thousand us dollars just to carry this our people and take them to the north and that did not stop ipob has been doing all they can to release this man and we keep finding that they have continued doing this thing secretly the government not only the little hitler in 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 no people the little hitler there not only him also another head there was that the, the, the dwarf the dwarf devil mahi there He's doing the same thing in a Bakaliki prison as I am talking to you right now. Go and make research. More than 60 dear friends have been incarcerated there. Able young men. They did nothing. In fact, even report has it that they tried to poison them by putting poison in their food so that when they release you a few days, the person will die. They keep doing all these things trying to kill our able young men because this seems like an assignment or will i say it was an assignment from the ginger weed they gave it to them you must eliminate this young man you must eliminate the young people in your town in your streets in your villages and these slaves these flavorful slaves they keep doing that without thinking because immediately the young men that would defend the land are being eliminated, then the Fulanese will declare a full-blown war against the Biafrans. Knowing that those that will defend the land are no longer there, most of them has been killed and some in prisons and all that. So Biafrans must be careful wherever they find themselves. The illegal abduction hasn't stopped yet. They continue abducting our men. They continue adopting our youths, tagging them ESN IPOB. We read story about a young man who went to buy coffin for the late in-law, and they just pick him up there and tag him IPOB. He ended in prison. We, the other day, we, we, we read about a young lady that was, that was picked up. As I speak to you now, the lady is currently in Suleja prison. And they killed the dad. What was the offense of the of the of the father? Because the father said, Why, where are you taking my daughter to? Where are you taking? Please leave the, the, the girl is in her 20s, four months pregnant. They took him to Abuja, beat him. In fact, story has it that they were marching on the stomach until until the, the girl had miscarriage. Only God knows how she survived it. Currently, now, she is still in Suleja prison. These are things we are undergoing. And those that call themselves uh, the, the, the elites, the Fulefus, those that claim they are the ones representing us in, in the zoological republic, representing their pocket or whatever, they haven't said any word. No word comes out from their mouth about all this abduction going on. They haven't made any statement against it. August, just August, um, I think uh, early August, Amnesty International released a report about the killings and abduction of young men in Southeast, which is Biafra land. Today, nothing has been done about it. Our people continue to disappear. You will see a young man today, and tomorrow you will no longer see that person. The secret adoption has continued. They keep doing it as a tool they are using against us. So I am telling Biafrans, especially those back at home, those in Biafra land, wherever you are, you should be careful, you should be watchful. You mind those you discuss about the struggle, those you discuss about Biafra, you mind, you look at your environment before you say some things. If you are in a bus 
and you see somebody in the same bus or in a taxi, they say, oh, the Air Fridays, they started the topic. Be sensible enough to know when to talk and to know when to be silent. They say sometimes silence is, go is golden. You don't just say anything in the public because you don't know those. You don't know the occupants of that particular vehicle. You don't know who they are. If you said anything for, that might be your last day on earth. If you even survive it, then you end up in prison. And they don't just keep people in prison within uh, Biafra land. They will take them to far north, Suleja prison, KB prison, and all these places. What have they done? What crime have they committed? So we must be very, very careful. People shouldn't be staying out late. Very, very important to our youths shouldn't be staying out late. And when you go out, tell people where you are going. Make sure that one or two persons know where you are going, your location, and where, I mean, your family member, you don't expose it to the public, your location. You let a family member and a trusted friend where you are at any particular time. Because the Janjaweed, they are now going about in plain clothes, abducting people kidnapping our youths. So our, our, uh, our citizens, citizens of Biafra must be very, very careful. People of Biafra must be very, very careful wherever they are at any given time. And those in diaspora, they are not uh, exempted in this. You must be very careful as well. Because those one, those uh, zoological republic uh, of Nigeria, the one Nigerian is there. They are not even happy with the wave we are making. Because those people in diaspora that supports one Nigeria, they only do this because they are beneficiaries. It's either their mom, their father, or parents, family members are in the government. So they get a part of the loot. So that's why they support one Nigeria. And anything you are doing, you should be careful with such people. You shouldn't mingle yourself with such people. They come up with a lot of allegations. It's everywhere, even in Taiwan, where we, are, where we are living. Someone once reported me, oh, he is the national coordinator of, of IPOV in Taiwan. That's a terrorist organization, blah, 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 to the government. But not knowing that Chukwu Kikabiyama will always turn every evil fashion against us for our own benefit. But today, IPOV Taiwan is registered in Taiwan. Because that opportunity created a window for us to educate the government agency what Biafra is all about and what IPOB stands for. So I am telling Biafrans, those also in diaspora, if you are making friends as a Biafra, mind those that you go out with because they are not happy with the wave we are making. They are not happy that you are a Biafran. They are not happy seeing that flag. Whenever you raise it up, him and a flag and a charge more. Whenever you raise it up, they feel very bad. The demons in them begins to jump up and down and they start planning the evil that they will melt out against you. So their friends must be careful. Their friends must be watchful. And I am speaking a word to their friends across the globe, lovers of freedom, especially their friends at home. No evil fashion against you shall prosper. Anybody that plans evil, anybody that is digging a hole for you to fall in, the person will fall inside. All their evil, all their evil plans against their friends will come back against them. Because some of them, they trust in their army, they trust in their guns and bullets. But we have only one God. We have Chipo Kikai Biyama. And only in his name we shall triumph. So I encourage their friends, Chipo Kikai Biyama is with us. And him being with us will not make us not to be watchful at all times. Continue to be watchful wherever you are and continue to be in the spirit, continue to uh, support the struggle and be on the right path. And Chukwu Kikabiyama will see us through. And Biafra, the final destination, we shall arrive there with songs of joy. I will hand over the microphone to my Evo, Reb Maze, Oscar, Okeke, uh, and I thank you once again for the opportunity you have given to me. It's back to you, Mazi Oscar. Ndewo. Thank you very much, Mazi. Well spoken, always, always well spoken. Thank you very much. I totally agree with what you just said uh, because uh, uh, everything is well planned. 
and it's our own responsibility for us to stand firm. And knowing well that evil may never want something good for us. And as such, we must be watchful and take good care of ourselves. So thank you once again, Mas, uh, uh, thank you very much. And without that was more, let me go to our presenter, uh, Mas, uh, Mas, uh, Mas, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you when you see loud and clear. Please, yeah, I think, oh, go ahead. Yeah, dear friends, um, we are here to make sure that uh, every lie the enemies has um, labored against us to bring it on open to each and every one of us to make to let you know that indeed is a lie and we must not uh, listen to them. Another thing is on the process for us to be watchful, to be careful. Uh, or in all our dealings is very very important because on the process what they normally do is to do what to begin to attack you in particular you you think that they are doing good for telling you that it is this it is that gunmen this that they will now come and kill you at will so we need to be very very careful on that uh, note we need to be very very careful our devices we use Whatever SMS we text and all those things, know how to clean it off or delete it and know what you uh, store in your phone. If possible, have a different, um, all this, uh, if it is a message you think that is very, very important for you to save, don't go and save it on your phone. You can have all these on online softwares where you can Google Chrome and all those things where you can save your things. Uh, um, like a Dropbox and all the rest. If you can be able to acquire it, you save all those things there. And when you want it, you go there, you retrieve it back. But leaving it on your phone, because the first thing they will see when they arrest you is to open your phone. The moment they see one or two things, even somebody with Radio Biafra app, they hold him, an app. So it means now that he can. He, there are apps you cannot download on your phone. There are apps because you are in Zoological Republic, ordinary app, whereby we saw Buhari with a Boko Haram flag and the Buratai. The, uh, the, 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 the pictures are online there, but you cannot download an app to use it to listen to the radio station you wish for or listen to news. These are the things we, that's, we are trying to let us know that these people are there for, to kill us. And on that note, what we're supposed to do is to watch our back while we are moving and while we are talking. Just as our brother has said it all, discussion on them, on cars and all those things, you must not. You must not. And anything I be gathering in Biafra land is no more. We shouldn't think of that, but for your own security reason. Then another thing is that our Android, our phones, we need to use it at this time. You see where those crimes are going on. Make sure you record it, hide and record it and post. These are the things, these are clear evidence, undeniable facts that you can use to rubbish these people, what they are doing. Very, very important. When you have it, your duty is to make sure you, 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 are, you hide somewhere to record it, zoom it very well. Let the whole world see it. You might not even talk or when you are talking you can change your voice if you are somebody they really know your voice or the location like most of the people that normally stay in their house to record those things you need to be careful also because through it they can look at where you are these are the wisdom we are just trying to share with us when it comes to this kind of thing so that you will be secured we love you you are our brothers you are our own flesh and blood all we are doing is for all of us to be saved nothing more nothing else because the enemy has come we have seen it long ago most of you may because maybe you're in in biafra land you're in the zoo you may not have access to network to browse to see the latest things that are happening so whatever nt and channel feed you is what you will have but we have seen all these things calculated and made a prediction which is working that this is what is going to happen because when you see somebody with a gun and a bullet the next thing is to shoot it out you don't need a prophet to tell you that so all these pro uh, predictions are what that have been researched and calculated and this is how it must be 
So we have seen it and we are uh, raising the alarm, letting you know what is on ground. And stop following politicians. Stop following politicians. Your life with the politicians is to make things more difficult. Look at now. Hope Ozodema is bragging that they are going to give him $120 million. They are going to share 800 and something million dollars. And his state is part of it. And tomorrow, some of you from Imo State will be jumping up. The other day, we heard that they want to give a $6 billion to a Boeing State governor. And he denied it. This idiot now called himself Hopo Zodema that will collect $120 million. If it is true, they give him, he says, for livestock. I read the news on channel. He says, for livestock. Let our brain not be twisted again. When you hear livestock and whatever, it's just open grazing. It's just a ranching or whatever. For them, remember the meeting they came, the southern governors came in Enugu. None of them attended that meeting. They are just exempting themselves because they know what they have engaged into. They know what they have signed. These are the things that will let you know the kind of criminals that are parading themselves as politicians. The kind of wicked people, the kind of demons that are moving about as your politicians. We keep on telling you this, but most of the time, when you see one or two videos, you see some hired people and some of you, they bought, they bought with uh, 5,000 Naira, 3,000 Naira. We see you moving about with them, which is very bad. Those money they are giving now is to bribe some certain traditional rulers, some certain chiefs, then use it now to open a particular ranch or ruga or whatever inside your own ancestral land where your own ancestors were buried your own grandfather your own great grandfather that you are bearing his his gene his dna you are answering his name then they will start a, a rearing cow there that is the reason politicians they don't care what they are interested is their political interest and that's all let and interest not that they are going to do anything i am an ex governor ask him what was your achievement on that go and ask rocha sokoro channel what was your achievement in Imo State after eight years? Nothing. Nothing. Tell me one thing. But go to the whole local government. Move to the whole local government of old Imo State, including Abia State and some part of Ebony State. Go towards the whole local government. You will see one thing that Let Sam Bakwe did there. For you to see a good man, when a good man is in power. You must see the man make sure that every local government in the old Imo State then, he established a factory an industry he built something is a project then another government have to come and take it but ask all this one now nothing but what they are so interested is either to to be to go to senate after his governor or to be vice president and on that note to tread their land to give out your own ancestral land to people you don't you nothing consign us with flanny Brother, there is no, even though we have black skin, there is, check our bloodline, check our DNA. Oh, when he here connect, Ryan and the Fulani, nothing, under normal circumstances, our women are not even supposed to marry to them. But these are the people, these people are forcing to bring to your land. Dear friends, we need to wake up and understand what is going on. That money they are telling you now, by the time the money enters in their hand, they have already agreed, they start bribing people started raising some certain uh, security outfit that they will use it to counter us and all those things you that had they have already strangled your economy then when they call you and give you fifty thousand naira see if it's 50 million you will turn against your people i give that money to one or two weeks it will finish and fulani will destroy you let's wake up nothing good come without sacrifice we must know that nothing you today is sunday night you are going to church what the the, the the jesus you want to follow pay the pay sacrifice for him to be that jesus so for you to gain the freedom there must be a sacrifice nothing go in this world nothing nothing goes for nothing if there must be pain, even your so-called governors your so-called governors okay back in Nemo state he's a homosexual do you know the sacrifice he paid for a man to open his ass and somebody's dealing with him mercilessly is a sacrifice before you see him there so you have to pay on a positive side these are the things we are doing you must do and we keep on telling and encouraging everybody have to stand don't be a saboteur be against these people that are wasting your life wasting your destiny frustrating your life as you are now in the zoo you have no future all you are just in here 
In here, chief water is not the way America grew. In here, chief water is not what how um, uh, London become London or become UK. Things we are well planned, but today you know we here chief water. We shouldn't be our dear brothers. Let us wake up, and that is why we continue to talk to encourage us. Let us wake up and find these people. Let us wake up and challenge them. Anything they are telling you is lie, pure lie. Anything politician is telling you is pure lie. Nothing good has ever come. Look at Anambra State now. An idiot is finishing his 10 or 8 years. Tell me something now. An Anambra man can come out and boast of Kangaroon warehouse he built with the billions. Call somebody in Singapore. Not call. Browse. Check how much. Check their own international airport. Google that of Malaysia. Check how much they build it. Look at the one, your own flesh and blood, speaking the same language with you, tell you he did to you. At the end of the day, this, the, the so-called international cargo airport is not working to be international. In the center of commerce, in the center of commerce, and you have politicians, you have mem members of House of Assembly, Assembly, you have members of House of Representatives, they cannot unite to insist for one international route for your own good dear friends this is why our able rep mazosko keke is assembling your brothers asian coordinators great men to speak to you at this time at all time this is why dos is making every effort that radio biafra is in every nook and cranny for us to debunk to speak the truth into your into your ear and for you to know even if there is no food, they con con convert it into fasting. For do what we ask you to do. Sorrow tarries in the night, but joy cometh in the morning, as Bible said it. And tomorrow things will be good. Even if you are late, you will be sure that your children, you left aside, they will have a good school. They will have a good life. After graduation, there will be employment. Not that your daughter will be raped. Or one I would will sleep with her in Abuja before they give her a job. Nothing like that. These are the things we are fighting. But it needs sacrifice. It needs sacrifice. It need to. It need discipline. It need obedient, following the rules and regulation. As our union do is in their custody. DOS is there. Whatever they ask you to do is what you and I have to do. That is the procedure. When they say don't go, don't ask question. Why are you telling me not go? believe them trust what they ask you wait later you will see most of our people have been killed now because they refuse to listen they ask them move away from there stay here don't go he's asking question then he want the person to tell him the truth the whole thing whereby the the, the information came from somewhere that he don't need to leak it and that person refused to move out and he died please we need to be careful at this time the enemy is at at our home we had information that they are trooping soldiers now in Anambra State. The land will swallow them, but I pity you who will not listen. On the day of sit at home, they ask you to sit at home. You sit. When it's late, don't move out. Wait. This thing will not last long. Within a short time, it will come to an end, and the sun will rise again and will begin to glorify the name of Chukwuka Kabiyama. Thank you very much, my able rep, as I hand the microphone over to you. Thank you very much, our able uh, uh, president and also our national coordinator. In fact, Mazu, uh, uh, you have said it all because uh, I really love what you just said. Uh, you have already given your friends a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of information on a way for for them to be more watchful. As regarding their phone handset, all these delegates, uh, all these uh, uh, phone and all and all whatsoever they use. And how they will be saved from the danger will because these men, evil men and women, sucking demons, they are looking for any slightest opportunity for them to use it and kill, kill our people. So uh, we must not fail to their fail to be a victim to them. No, we must. We, uh, we, we, we must we be extremely careful and watchful. Because if you take every precautions being spoken in this uh, Biafran radio. Little different, sorry. All this evil they have already castrated, we, we shall never be a victim to, to it. Chukuka will more surely save us, let's free our life. The problem we have is when you say those years, 
That is why when we cut off head, the head we follow it. I mean, the ears we follow it far. But we believe and I will pray that such a thing will never be our portion. Because the, the mind of Tukukan is for all of us to see new nation which called Biafra. And that is what we are working for. And that is why we are here to give you information. This people did not meant well for us. And we must be watchful. Watch every our movement, wherever we go, whatsoever we do, we must be still watchful. Because their plan is how they will eliminate us on daily basis. You have it all for him. A lot of information he gets. If we can be able to raise man and the hell to precautions, we never fail pity to this evil man because they are demonic. And all their actions is how they will reduce our, our population on daily basis. But it shall never work for them. Without wasting more time, let me go to our uh, next in line to also for him to also uh, uh, remind our people, their friends, to be watchful. Be mindful what you are doing. Be watchful, whatever you are doing. So I call him upon my mother, uh, go ahead. Yes, thank you very much, Oscar Keke. Mazi, point of correction, Mwakeze. Like I can see most of the time, you always say Mwakibia. I mean my name. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Not that. Thank you yeah. very much. Mwakeze. Anthony Mwakeze. My fellow Biafran, I greet everyone. And uh, I believe that uh, just like Igbo people used to say, the two people don't know Kambwede. No longer uh, grammar in the evening mass. Because uh, we, just like I said before, we all are grown up. Even the children in our land now understand what is going on. So the need for us to be watchful is not what we need to tell ourselves. But we say this, but we always remind you what to do because it's, in our, it's, it's our duty to do that. And uh, just like Igbo people say, sorry, because I must be using the language of heaven. You understand, please. And that is the reason why we're always saying this thing, voicing out, trying to remind our people to do the needful. So the need for us to be watchful is because just like my comrade said before, my fellow comrade, when you are surrounded with enemy, you have to be watchful. This uh, security men we have now, normally they will tell you security is to protect your life and your property. But this time around, is a different case. So the security men we have now, they are our enemy number one enemy good that is what we will bear in mind and that is why we'll be very very careful and watchful every day nigerian government will tell you the there is a, there are 700 boko haram terrorists repented boko haram terrorists <laughs> 2000 will repent they will carry uniform give them for those who that repent, we never for one day carry us go to their camp to catch those who never repent. <laughs> so these people are they are, they are just fooling themselves. Like I said before, thank God because everybody don't wake up. This one not be say what he consign our with the overload. They consign our with the overload, my brother. But can I motor have the edge? Omo rozi motor have below edge well well. So he consign our with the overload. All of us must wake up. And when you are being watchful, be guided, your steps, just like what Neke said before, be mindful of your phone, the things you put there. You cannot put everything there because you are not a security man or you are not the one of the ESN operative. Whatever information you want to pass, you pass your information, you guide yourself. Be guided, please, my people, because we are in a war. Our leader said that 
there will be movement, normal activity will be going on in the town, but there is war in the bush, and that is what is happening now. Most of people are going to their normal business, normal activities, but there is a war going on in East. Only those know that knows. And that is why we thank God for Onyendu and the creation of ESN. So my people, we must be guided. And another thing is that those that you think that you trust, or those that we speak for, for you, they see you like nothing. Our politicians, they are not for us. All this one, you see them singing song with sweet mouth. After this time, the next time you see them again, next four years. The 5,000 the 5, they give you, maybe you have eaten it, or if you are lucky. If you are lucky, you become alive. If you are not lucky, you will die in this uh, political rally. So these people, they are not for us. We know them that they are blood-sucking demons. They don't care about you. And most of them are criminals. Those things you, you see them say is just like a thief. When you cut a thief and slap him, he will say, sorry, sir, even if you're younger. If, even if you're younger than the thief, he will say, sorry, sir. It's a devil work. Then you pardon him. Tomorrow you see him polish his shoe, dress again, change location. So that is how our politician is. They are thieves. All those things you see don't cross their hearts. Because they've been telling us this thing for years. But look at our road. Ordinary tap water we don't have. We kopua ana biafri mwete mili. Look at some northern as another two, they are, for, they are not suffering the way we suffer to get water, to fresh water. But their place is desert, but in their front land, they just open land small, you see water inside. To put pipe, these people cannot. Every day they're telling us shit. Every day they're telling us nonsense. The time have come when you see any police, everybody will go and sew a bag. You sew your bag like Dinta, like Hunter bag. Carry stone, put inside, the dress with your suit, with your knit bag and stone. Anywhere you see politicians, you stone them. We must rise up, my brothers. We must rise up. We cannot continue like this. We must be guided. We must be watchful. Most of all, we must be security conscious. All of us must come to security, both women, men and women. All also civil can come in age earlier, but also this year was one age is even earlier. So we must be security conscious by sacking all this gate man that we are employing. We and these people, we are in the war. No need of uh, painting the world. We are in the war, and they know what they are doing. In olden days, they be sending their foot soldiers through cattle in our bush to study our bush. I want to ask you one question, my fellow dear friend. Even if you are in, in Lagos now, or you are in, in your father's house, your father's house in Biafra land, do you know that you don't master your bush the way Flan people master your bush? Do you know that? If they chase you inside your these people, they have track from that your father's land bush to Benu Estate. They have their tracks. You that own the land, you don't know your bush the way they know their, your bush. And this is what they've been planning for long because they have patience according to their master, Usman Dafodia. They have patience. You think they don't know what they are doing? All these get men, all these people signing shoes. We must start. The only way to start is to start. We must start doing something, my brother. The only way to start is to start. If you continue saying it, I will start. I will, we will say it one year. You never start anything. Ten years. Only the, your, your mouth will be making sound that look like I will start, I will start. Until you start, we must start. Even from sucking all these gate man, all these shoe shiners, what have I not shine this shoe for? My brother, we have to wake up. We have to wake up. Not every time we'll be coming on Radio Brass Biafra singing, and all, upon all these things, some people will still say they are not doing enough. But we know what we are doing. We know what DSS, uh, DOS is doing. So my people, we must be security conscious. Everybody is a suspect. 
Even on your own, Kenya name IPOB one family. When you can't use the one family, you will be in. No, it in a booze out. You must be watchful, be security conscious, be guided by your steps, and plan. A connection as on as on where a faith without work to zero. As you have faith, you must be doing one or two things. Through that, your work, your faith will manifest. So, my people, look at many our women they carry in no Bible last time by little Hitler and his people. We don't know how many they are. And some of these women, there's some kind of atrocity. The, the security men, police and army will come in with those women. Them themselves, they will be afraid. If they let this one go and if she go and say these things, we are in trouble. They will kill the person. Honestly speaking, think of our women, helpless women that have no power. The nature of a woman is for us to take care of them. That is why their body is very soft. You can imagine a woman like that and a soldier, this nonsense soldier without training, they will carry a woman. Divide them in northern prisons. Whenever the officer go and drink brukut or do whatever he wants to do, because it's like animal. And when he's doing it, from where he is, he will be happy because he have an enyamere. He will go and descend on. All those things will forget about it. And some people will sit down talking about school. You that went to school before, what is your job? You will see an Okada rider in Nigeria. The English that will come out of his mouth, you say, will shock. He's a graduate, but look at where he ended up. It must be a sacrifice that we, we made, honestly. I was listening for Lady Biafra some time ago, anchored by Mazi Keshuku. He said something about the black Negroes in America. In olden days, they don't used to sit down on the bus. Even if you are a black man, you come first before any other person. If the boy is full, even if, even if he's a young little boy while he's a white or girl, you must stand up for the person to sit down. Until one woman refused, say no. That is how the thing changed. The woman said no. The woman suffered. She paid sacrifice. They took her to jail. For months, for years, which I cannot tell. But the story is true. Until this man, Martin Luther King, preached it because he's a preacher. Unlike this, our preacher we have now. He preached in the church. And all of them start trekking. They trek for six months, six years, five years, depending on. Until now, the things change for them. We must pay a sacrifice, my brother, because. Maybe this my story, I did not narrate it well because I'm not a lecturer, but you guys know what I'm saying about. You can go and look for the story if you want to hear about it very well. But I'm giving you an example. The need for us is not your fault that they born you by this time. It's not our fault that we are this generation that Biafra want to come. After all, what of those people that was born in the, that fight the war in the year 1967? Are they no human being? Or do you want to tell me that God is a, is, a, is a confused God? No death is mistake, my brother. The day, where, the day they created you, the day they born you, in heaven, they know how you will die. No death is a mistake. And no death is an accident. It is that somebody's child that died and let people know there is something like death. And for one, some of one, some of the dead, they are, they come to let the living learn. We learn from the experience or from the things we see. So for one, we are back about we couldn't do it either. So we cannot be afraid of death. If you are afraid of death, you are running, running back after they kill the person that is in your front. The next is you. They must kill you because you and them don't have one orientation. You and them don't share the same culture. <laughs> to them, killing somebody is a normal thing. And the first person that you will kill for you to go heaven.
post stand up in the villages let the men wake up start if even if the streets start cutting tree there is war war is coming i don't know how we can put it again for you guys to understand every day they will bring boko haram 200 2000 500 depending on the case may be they say they rehabilitate them give them uniform for them to come and intimidate us because they know when an ordinary flamini man coming being an evil man we're always independent you must fight back but that one with uniform you will say ah it's your authority then you will give him chance he will shoot your brother and you give him chance and go but he's not a real soldier man he's not an army he's a terrorist in uniform and we cannot keep him quiet and for them to kill us our politicians are not helping matters forget them let this let us face this our people and if there's any politician that we find out that is working very hard to eliminate us then we will eliminate him because of the boom boom we have a job and all you politician whatever you people are planning is for your head just like i told you you guys we are dead already wherever your children are we know all of them there is nowhere you will run to that you cannot see a different so you people are not safe. The best thing for you now is what is that even more valuable? The best thing for you guys to do now is to start now correcting your mistake. It's better to be late than never. Because some of you will be thinking now it's too late for me to join them or to stand in the truth. Our eyes, our hands are open to welcome you guys. If you cannot be them, you join them. We are the indigenous of Biafra. We have taken over our land. All you politicians, you're just like a ceremonial uh, chief. Which you guys know. And your masters, they know it already. So the only option you have now is for you to join your people. Because that's the only place you can have safe. There's nowhere. If you run to Janjawe. They will still kill you there because you are not the same with them. They are not using you. See who goes on them. Every English that come out of his mouth is a format because he, the, the 419 business have eaten deep inside him that he cannot just go and check all of his English. He's a format. Anything he believes that everything is is a job man. And people like that, you're waiting for them to come and fight for you. People that invite terrorists to come and kill his fellow Biafrans. So my people, we must be security conscious. We must be guided. We must be watchful. Please. They have given us more than sign. We have to wake up. We have to wake up, my people. And we that are calling you people to wake up, we will not get tired. Because when you're back in a journey and you have not got into your destination, you get tired. That means you are going nowhere. If you people looking that we will get tired, we are not getting tired though. So whether you guys like it or not, you must wake up. Even if you don't wake up by our call, you wake up by the killing. The killing of your neighbor, the killing of your brother, because very soon the killing will come nearer. And don't expect ESN to do everything. They are human being like you. You yourself, we ourselves, we must start doing something. There is no brain that is idle. Think. Start cutting trees. Please, my people. These people, they are not hiding. It's obvious. They're doing everything. Even if you understand, fine. Even if you don't understand, fine. These Bugari, they know that it is no Bugari, but they can't even go to uh, UNN. Because they can defend anybody. They can defend anything with our money. How can a president be borrowing money to build railway from our country to neighboring country? That we are not benefiting in anything from them. My people, please, we have to be wise up. 
even if for, not for anything, for the killings you see every day, the one you see in the internet, the one you see by your side, and our media, newspaper, news companies, they are not helping matters. Please. We are the only one that will help ourselves. The only true blood that we have now is an Ambazonian people. Look at them. When they started, do you see how many? They don't even have uniform. Those few of them will carry gun. Then gone. But look at the other day, they, 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 they do their independent day. You see full army because... They have understand the men in Amazonia that have understand that we must defend our land. And now they are women. How can we stay like this and people will be clean us and we keep quiet? Please be friends. We must wake up. Pass your stock, okay, please. Let me hand the microphone microphone over to you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. We are uh, Biafrans and lovers of uh, freedom. We are about to wind in down our program today. By special grace of Chuko Kabima, without wasting much time, I will go to other people to give us uh, their closing remark and also in addition to remind Biafrans and lovers of Biafrans the need to support Eastern security. Very, very needful. Please. Uh, open when we are closing the mark and also remind our people for support need for supporting Eastern Security Network. Thank you very much. Microphone to you. Yeah, once again, thank you, Mazi Oscar Okeke, the IP will be a share representative. I will make it snappy because of our time. I think we are kind of running out of time. Yeah, first of all, I thank all the Afrans and lovers of freedom worldwide for their time, for listening to us, the Asian National Coordinators. I say thank you and may Chukwu Kikabi, I continue to bless you, guide you, and prosper your ways. You will not die the death of another person. You will only die on your own day when the Lord assign it. And timely death is not yours. He say, he say, he say. And again, I must also tell us that we must do everything uh, within within our within our power to support the Eastern Security Network. Uh, I mean, when you go to the bar to drink, when you go out to party, remember there are men still in the bush. Remember there are men that left their kids. Remember there are men that left their wife and they left their family and they are in the bush defending the land, defending our forest. It is within our care to take care of them to take care of their children. If you don't know, ESN, I mean ESN members in the bush, IPOB do take care of their family. The responsibility of their family is upon IPOB. I encourage Biafrans worldwide um, when we, so that we can continue to do all that we can to do our ESN launching, to continue to do our ESN launching and raise money for the men at the forefront. Raise money for their kids so that their kids will go to school. So that the men in the bush defending the land will not be worried, so much worried about their family. They will know that yes, IPOB is taking care of their family, that their kids are not out of school that their wife are still living in a rented their rented house without worrying about the house rent and others so it is our duty to raise money you are there you drink your choice bottled water you you make choice when you want to drink beer you say i don't want this brand i want the other brand or when you want to drink your whiskey but there are men who left all these things they are there to defend the land, to defend our land, to defend your own house. I am talking to those in diaspora. Do all that you can to raise money. And when you raise this money, make sure you contact your national coordinator. 
make sure you contact your national coordinator you can ask them where should i put this money how will this money reach to uh esn nihina some 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 uh jezebels will i say those that the devil has possessed are uh, in there trying to stop what we are doing in one way or the other but we are not relenting we must continue to fund ESN, we must continue to support them. So dear friends, wherever you are, lovers of freedom, keep up the good work and continue to support uh, ESN. In my closing remark, in another uh, point, I wanted to use this opportunity also to invite dear friends uh, in Taiwan. Today is the meeting of uh, the Taipei family. So please find yourself there, not only being on the internet or social media claiming you are dear friends. Uh, you, are, you don't show up and you don't contribute to the work. You cannot just be there. Anything you are doing and you don't put your time, you don't put your finance in it, you better shut up. You're not part of the movement. For you to be part of the movement, you must give in your time. You must give in your finance because time, they said, time is precious. And anytime you give in, you're not getting it back again. So let us continue to support the good work that we are doing. And I encourage the members and I encourage the family as we continue to grow and expand. I thank you all for listening, dear friends in Biafra land, lovers of freedom across the world. Thank you for your time. And I will hand over the microphone to the Asia, Asia Rep, IPOB Asia Rep, Mazi, Oscar. Okay, okay. And in no distant time, we'll also be back again to talk on another issue. Thank you so much. Marzios Kokeke is back to you. Now you have the microphone. Thank you very much, Marz. That is uh, well noted. Without wasting more time, I'm calling also on our uh, Ebo uh, Marz Oduro. Please, you are closing the mic and also remind our people need to uh, come uh, uh, support the Eastern Security Network. Please, very brief. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ab um, Aborep. Um, ESN has come to stay and uh, there's no going back. Whether they target any name or whatever they wish, that is for them. ESN has come to stay. Be a friends, you must have that in mind. And uh, is your duty, is my duty, is our duty, collective effort to make sure that we sustain our ESN. They will defend us. You see dead bodies, they are kind in Ukraine in Kaduna State. That is human being human being like you and they are christians baptized by the holy ghost answering john paul whatever go to church every day receive communion just like you but the full and murdered them on a cold blood and nobody's talking about it why is it not happening in our land is because of esn they're in the bush they're fighting with them and because they are there they don't want to come so anything that will affect esn is what we will fight we will fight that when it comes to their supply and the only way to fight it is for you and i to contribute you must give as you receive your salary your income you make your budget this is for esn and you contribute it make sure you channel it to the appropriate quarter just as our brother have said there are people out there whom the zoo has already bought they are trying to destroy what we are doing because they know that if they get esn we are finished so they try to block it make sure that the money you raise goes to the appropriate quarter call your make sure the money is being raised under a coordinator under the dos under mazen namdikano that is number one if the fundraising is not under these people under this uh, uh, administration i mentioned mm -hmm. don't put your money there because before it's been uh, uh, the fundraise is being done they will be aware and they will make sure that this is where the money will go so that ESN will continue to be supported. Other money raised, some group of people decided to play funny. Not that we have forgotten, but we don't want them to distract us. At the right appropriate time, we will ask them some questions. Thank you very much for being part of this program and they continue to listen to Radio Biafra. I now hand the microphone over to our Evo Asian Rep, Mazi Oscar Okeke. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Without wasting more time, let me go to our also, uh, Mars Marquez. Uh, please, you are closing the market. Just use two minutes, so. You are closing the market. 
Thank you very much for the opportunity you have uh, given to us to talk to our people. The Chugo Kalem will continue to bless you, he said. And a very big thank to our presenter, Mwachineke. Thank you for all your work, all the good work you are doing. And I want to say a very big thank to my fellow comrade, Mazi Charles. And thanks to all the listeners, all our listeners, dear friends, all over the world, please. It's a very important thing that we support the uh, ESN. That one is for sure very, very important. So there's nothing we say now that we have not, we have not said before. Please, please. These things that are happening in Nigeria now, in our Biafra land, Anambra, precisely. You guys are supposed to know that these people come for war. So we must do anything in our possible means to support ESN. Just like my comrade, fellow comrade said before, call your coordinator, the closer coordinator to you, call, the, call him and he will provide where you can pay money for ESN. In anything we are doing, those that are in, uh, on ground in Biafra land, please do anything you can do within your power to protect yourself and fight for your right. Because if you don't fight, they will still kill you. So I thank all dear friends for uh, listening. My name is Tigri Men Anthony Chukwodi Mwakeze. By special grace of God, I am uh, National Coordinator, IPOB, here in Vietnam. Me and my family member here in Vietnam, I'm bringing greetings to the all uh, to the dear friends all over the world. Say me Chukwodi Kabiyama continue to bless us. He said, he said, he said. Over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, and here today, without wasting more time, we really thank Chuku Kikabiyama for our program today. And also, we want to use this opportunity to remind all our listeners, our viewers, and also all lovers of freedom, please. There is also urgent need to help support Eastern Security Network. What we are doing is what we benefit everyone. Whether you support uh, IPOB or you're not supporting us, but whether you support our ideology or you're not uh, really agreed with our own philosophy and our ideology, but all of us have something in common. We need to be, our land needs to be liberated. We need freedom. Yeah, I believe whether you're a domicile in America, a domicile in Europe, a domicile in Asia, a domicile in Africa, all of us are clamoring for one thing, justice. And for us to get that justice is for us to restore our holy land, ancient land, called Biafra. That is the only way we can get justice. And for us to help you to do these things, we must support our Eastern Security Network. So whether you agree in our philosophy and our ideology, is irrelevant. What binds us together is for us to join hand together to restore our nation. Because I believe even those political juggernauts in uh, Asolok, in Abuja, those uh, evil men and evil women, they still secretly wish to have their own nation. But because of their stomach and selfish interests, they may not like. But if, uh, if we restore them, we also like to enjoy the fruits and enjoy the good life in their own life. So please, we urge each and everyone, our listeners, to support Eastern Security Network. Very, very important. And also, I want to use the opportunity to thank all our listeners and uh, and all the uh, lovers of freedom, especially those in Biafra land and the IPOP in Despola and uh, all those people in Despola. Please, always turn in every Sunday. We, Asian National Connectors, always come to your way every Sunday by special grace of Chukuki Kabiyama. And also from here, I want to also send my greetings to our leader, Hamadike, the man we love so much, and tell us our leader, Mazin and that Chukuki Kabiyama may continue to protect him and guide him, that no evil, no weapon from danger will be hurt him. A very good man and a very nice man. And I will pray also to Chukuki Kabiyama to protect his family, his wife and children, and also his siblings. And also, at the same time, we move towards a uh, uh, prayer to Chukukan to bless and protect our HOND, and also our deputy HOND, and all the members of the Delegate of State, 
and also IPOB principal officers, national coordinators, zonal coordinators, senatorial districts, all of them, media, every department in IPOB, and our uh, grant men in Bush, Eastern Security, and other people in branch, all that people that is not name will not be able to mention their names. We pray to Chuko Khan to continue to protect your people and those men that will call in upon the name of Chuko Kikabiam on daily basis to protect, we call it uh, invisible soldiers. Those people that have been in a gap praying, call him upon the name of Chuko Kikabiam. Our men in the regions that call him upon the name of Chuko Kikabiam to protect and safeguard what we are doing. I say may Chuko Khan continue to protect them and uh, replenishing them and give them whatever they needed to succeed in this Biafran restoration. And also, I thank Chukwu Kikabiam and the life of our presenter, our great man, you have been doing most proud here in Asia, Mas Tony Obido. I say may Chukwu to continue to protect you. And here, from here, I, I am Mas Ote Costa, I sign out. Thank you very much, Mas. Microphone back to you, MSM. Back. This is Radio Biafra House of Service coming to you through Radio Biafra London. My name remains Mars Jonathan Chinedu, and you've heard the voice of Mars Jacob Embassy from Nasrawa State, the Middle Belt, where we call Middle Belt. He has been calling on all and sundry from the Middle Belt, so called in order to come because there is something i see in these people when you talk with many of them privately the so-called middle belters once you are speaking to them they will tell you the they will refer to their political representative either their local government chairman whether he approve it whether he they too much belief on they are political representatives that even they don't they don't have even their own mind that is what i personally observe and they are too much afraid many of them are listening from southern kaduna you talk to them they start telling you one thing or the other how my goodness me i don't for them they are in the midst of a in a dilemma that is what I see, because uh, they are living with the, the the bad guys. They are living with them, so they are always afraid, even to speak. That is why we should encourage them, as Mars Jacob is encouraging them, in order to come up. You should look at how many people are being killed, are being buried. They were buried, I think, day before yesterday in southern Kaduna, in a mass grave, in a place, in a country that um, officially there is no war. But so called bandits, which are the Fulani terrorists, they are rampaging. These are the Fulani jihadis. The government of Nigeria is sponsoring them because you cannot tell me that more than. 500 to 1000 bikers each bike will be carrying three people drive i mean the the uh, three three people mounting on each bike bike all of them they are armed to the teeth they are moving around can this type of people move around secretly they are moving around from one state to another from north to middle belt from one community to another and the nigerian military they don't they never see them this is how they came and attacked also one have you forgotten people witnessed that they saw them they were too many going on motorcycles flying for more than 100 kilometers on the road nigerian road down to enugu they were never stopped and you are telling me that uh, we should continue in this uh, holy union and you are telling me that we we will stay and be praying for peace to reign when we continue listening to their to their rubbish 
Oh, the election. A win election. Uh, this, what are you, what election for what? What are you electing? As they can, you know, the rubbish uh, people in Imo State. It's a practical example. People wasted their time to vote. It doesn't matter how imperfect, yes. But they chose somebody. And after, they, they didn't even bring the second person. It would have been even palatable. That is how you see, you know, how bold and audacious the Fulani Caliphate is. They don't care. They sign agreement with Hopos of Emma. And from fourth position, somebody that never won any place, no local government, no place, no even rep no representative from the party. All of a sudden, they brought him and Supreme Court Judge George he, he put him there. What does it mean? He rubbish the, the people, everybody, that you are nonsense, you are vote, you are just wasting your time, you are vote, you wasted, they wasted time. Wasted money to organize so-called uh, shambolic elections. And thereafter, they put any person they want. And people will be telling, saying, uh, uh, leave us to have election in Anambra. What, what is the need? What is the need? This is how this Fulani Caliphate, how they work. This is how they work. How they rule. Therefore, we encourage all and sundry, the whole indigenous population, unfortunate enough to find themselves in that location called Nigeria, in order to rise up. Do not see what you are doing as a only Biafra. Thank God they do what they have risen up. It is remaining the middle belters, those that are eating and dining. Do not think that, uh, you know, when you come up, you are, you'll be killed. No, stop being afraid. Rise up and do something. That is how human beings, real human beings behave. I will continue. This is to announce that our radio station in Mpo is back. 102.1. Our FM station FM is booming now at Mpo. Tune in 102.1 Mpo and environs. As we say, we will be coming slowly but sure. This FM station will reach everywhere in Biafra land. Therefore, call your friends and way wishers at Mpo. In order to tune in, they are, take your radio, your phone, no more. You don't have to waste your data again. At all. Tune in 102.1 and you will hear my voice. Please, we must continue. I will start by making my usual remark. Please stop calling these people. Stop referring to them as a house of full name. There is nothing like a house of Fulani. This is a grand deception. House of Fulani is a grand deception. What we have are the Hausa and the Fulani as different ethnicities. Two different ethnicities. The Fulani, they manipulated the Hausa. In 1804, and the house are for themselves. And, you know, offered themselves as a, is it a peace offering to the full army after destroying themselves? The full army, they know how to manipulate people, they can use religion, they can use anything, any the Anything could be their weapon. That is how dangerous they are. If they come, they take over the treasury of a state. Finish. They use your money to fight you. Do you remember during the war, 
go on they sold the uh, one nigeria go on is uh, you know jumping up and down one nigeria we must be one nigeria uh, one nigeria not knowing that he's being used today can he speak he has turned into a prayer warrior that is how they behave how gullible how gullible oh, these uh, people call the christians uh, i'm telling you gullible that is why today the topic of my submission will be is emancipation from gullibility today somebody that is being that was used in order to hand over their friends to the Fulani Caliphate, even themselves, even their region, everything. They, do you hear his voice when they are destroying their villages? Go on villages. <laughs> Go on villages. His community are, are destroyed. His people are living as refugees. <laughs> do you, have you seen the irony of it? because when you are gullible you become exploited that is why i'm going to discuss about the gullibility today all these people today is still they never learn that is that is one thing so bad about black africans they never learn from history you know there is one thing which Europeans. When I, um, I talk about Europeans, the Americans, Australians, they are involved. They are Europeans originally. So I'm talking about all of them. They civilized the world, even Japan, South Korea, even China. They learn from history. They understand? They, they learn from history and experience black people never learn they continue making the same mistake making the same mistake making the same mistake thinking that one day the same thing they are doing maybe they will get different result that is the height of foolishness and stupidity that is why our leader have been shouting the problem we black black people has the pro problem we have is in our head is in the brain our brain are not completely developed i'm telling you honestly it will things will come out during my submission please stop calling them house of fulani they manipulated the houses the today is who is the chairman of a uh, uh, northern governor forum is he not a middle better that is suffering from the hands of the fulani is he not him? Are you going to tell me that he didn't know how the Fulani manipulated the, the house arrest? Are you telling oh, the, the Fulani, the, the people they call the bandits, they are killing them? Are you telling me that uh, Solomon Lalong didn't know that Sadwana of Sokoto, I mean Ahmad Bello and Abubakar Tafawa Belewa, they negotiated with the uh, uh britain that for them to join that unholy union called nigeria that middle belt must be added as part of the north are you telling me that uh, uh this guy samuel along didn't know about it he knew he know not even knew he knows because he's still knowing but why is it that he's uh you know he's still in their midst eating and dining with them to the detriment of his people because he is extremely selfish money he has money he's been given money political position and protection at least uh, until he dies he will not be poor he is using a diplomatic passport to fly anywhere he wants he has a uh, his uh, children schooling abroad he has houses abroad so to hell with the history and all that that is the gullibility of africans that is why today i'm going to preach about emancipation from gullibility it is killing us we must continue
please stop calling them the house of Fulani. There is nothing like a house of Fulani as a people. It is only a deception. Once again, I'm announcing that our radio, FM radio, is now booming in Mpo. You tune in 102.1. That is the frequency, please. Mpo and the environs. You tune in. 102.4. I mean, point one. Sorry, 102.1. And please, let me correct this. Tomorrow being Sunday, by the grace of Chuku I because I thought I said Monday the other day. No, it is on Sunday tomorrow. I will be here with the America rep. All, both North and South America. They'll be joining me to talk to their friends. Please, you better tune in to listen by 8 p.m. BT, that is Biafra time. Tomorrow being Sunday, the 10th of October, 2021, I will be joined by the America representatives, the America, both North and South, Canada, USA, Mexico, and the South, all, all the two continents of America. I'll be joined by the representatives, the coordinators. Therefore, we must continue. As I said earlier on, today is the second day of October 2021. The topic of my submission today it says emancipation from gullibility. What do we call gullibility when you are when they say somebody is gullible? Gullibility it means the state of being easily persuaded into believing something that is not true, easily being fooled. That is gullible. People that pursue shadow, people that could be distracted. You will be you could be termed as gullible because you believe. You know, this word, believe, is different from knowing. Sometimes you satisfy, you satisfy yourself by believing something you don't know. You cover your ignorance by believing. This would be a lesson of another day, please. They falsely portray to you that Nigeria is a nation, which is a lie. Because we are debunking the lies that make up Nigeria. Do you understand? Remember the famous statement of our leader. He said that he is going to destroy Nigeria with nothing but truth. Truth. Not a uh, missile. Not a uh, weapons. No, but truth. The weapon of truth. Because Nigeria is hiding a lot of truth. Nigeria is just a conglomerate of lies, network of lies. That is what keeps Nigeria going. Lie, lie and lie. Lie, lie and lies. Do you understand? When we expose them, we are shining light into the thickest part, part of darkness. And that is why we, Chuko Kiabiyama kept us in that part of the world. Because he knows that a time will come when Britain will come and lump people together, lump darkness, bring more darkness into that side of the world. And do you know what? Light shines brightest. In the thickest part of darkness. And they understand. That is when light shines brightest. When you light a lantern under sunlight during the time, you don't see it. But during that thick night, you know, the night of uh, rain, after rain, around uh, 3 4 a.m. in our land, that is the thickest part of darkness. 
any slightest spark, it will be noticed anywhere. If you understand? They tell you that Nigeria is a nation. It's a lie. A nation is a community of people formed on the basis of a combination of shared features like language, history, ethnicity, culture, and territory. A nation is a community of people that share all these things. You must have these things in common. Language, ethnicity, culture, and the territory. Which one do we have in common with the Fulani, please? We don't have anything in common with these people. They live in the desert. We are cultured in the rainforest. They understand. They still maintain that uh, medieval feudalism in them. We are republicans in nature. Our food is different from theirs. We eat a lot of vegetables they don't. They only drink uh, cow milk and meat. That is their, their most important food. Cow, full and I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Cow milk and meat. Because that is the only thing they... That is why. You can you cannot see a an indigenous person in that mostly southern part of Nigeria, Biafrans, in particular, stay maybe three four days without eating green vegetable. The Fulani they can stay ten years without tasting anything green vegetable because they don't have it. So what do we hear that we you call us a nation? Or a people who, you know, the thing is this since 1960 to today, what Nigerians are fighting is to be together, to be united. The unity of Nigeria that is what they have been fighting. That is why nobody, Nigeria is, they are not even talking of industrial revolution or industrial advan advancement, industrialization. No, no. Look at this. You listen to the statement of uh, the imposter called Bugari. The imposter, the same thing, the unity of Nigeria. That is what we have been hearing, what they have been saying before we are born, maintaining Nigeria. I told you, as I said yesterday, South Sudan saw this. Why didn't we? Why are we always, I mean, dear friends, mostly Igbos? Why do we always become blinded with our our selfish desire, our selfish interest? Why? It baffles me. People like uh, the Southern Sudanese, they saw the future from the beginning of the the uh, independence of uh, Sudan, and they started fight immediately. They didn't even wait. They say no, they don't have to be in debt in that communion because Britain is giving them out into a people they don't even know. Into the hands of the Arabs. Had it been Britain didn't interfere and the Arabs they came, they conquered them, they fought and conquered them, it would have been palatable. Just the same like we, us, dear friends. Britain just offered us as a a uh, 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 bond offering to the full caliphate had it been britain did not colonize us and uh, the full caliphate they came on their own to fight us and they defeated us and they are doing what they are doing it would have been better it would have been pal highly better palatable to us at least we know but this one a third force came And they took us. They brainwash us into their ideology, their religious ideology. And we followed. Now, as they are going, they sell us into another, another set of 
worst type of uh, colonialists that we also you know that is why when i look at people you know that is uh, let me tell you this <laughs> do you know that this is the reason why the fulani any of their ethnicity of any fulani person that you know um embraces another religion like christianity his brothers will look for him to kill him they will kill him they will disown him first do as if you know how quiet and down they will kill him do you know why one of the reasons the fulani has been colonized by arabs by the arabs and they they fell now they imbibe themselves they, they took islam as their religion they acclimatize themselves to that religion using it to prosper as a people now another person somewhere want to come and recolonize them again bring another ideology it means recolonization that is why when i see some dear friends that embrace another religion other than christianity like islam islam we are not against it but the inconveniences being colonized double second time you you never even deliver yourself we never finish suffering the devastating effect of christianity now you are adding another one <laughs> what do you think that it will be? <laughs> Just he said, I don't know how I'll bring this thing out. You know, if I'm thinking how to bring it out so that people will understand. We are suffering from the devastative effect of Christianity they impose on us, which is now, uh, you know, uh, wanting uh, something that is hewing us down something that is making us more gullible now another religion they are bringing another religion to force on us how do you think that it will be is it not oh can you see oh, you know we we kill uh, that is all slaughter direct just imagine during the end sars protest Imagine Asari Dokubo because he embraced another religion. Because another ideology he embraced. That is another colonization. Which means, you know, why others are having one colonization, he is having double. Double colonization. Have you forgotten how he started posting? attacks which they orchestrated in army feke although mosque that small little mosque they are he, he is the one championing propaganda calling on evil muslims to rise up to defend themselves are you i, I don't i don't know are you do you see the the danger do you see the danger Imagine calling Igbo, Igbo Muslims, oh yeah, defend yourself, which means fight against your fellow brothers. <laughs> In all this, you will see the wisdom of the Fulanese killing any of them themselves, any of their, their sibling that take on Christianity. You see, the, you know, it's painful, yes. You know, sentimentally, it's painful. Every killing is painful. But when you remove a cancer, because that is what they call it, if you leave it, it will grow. And in the next future, in the nearest future, in the longer future, they will expand to become problems to that race. Japan saw this. You know, I'm talking slowly today so that it will enter penetrates into the scores of the hearers japan saw tomorrow that is why they resisted the european version of christianity 
for two not uh, one year not 10 years not 30 years 265 years which means one person one king will die another another one will take over and still maintain the status quo the restriction after him another person will many generations 265 years they resisted christianity if they see you as a christian they kill you and kill your family members for you as an individual as a sentimental person who we are because these sentiments i have seen it that it is the our enemies are using it as weak points and it is oh why are you killing him now hey, whoa, he's a human being hey, whoa. but the people that are doing that they are not calculating today they are calculating in the next hundred years if we allow the cancer to grow how it will be are you are you getting me are you seeing the reason why we have catastrophe in Biafra land? Because we treat issues with sentiments and the blood, just useless sentiments. When a, a, a saboteur will be killed, they will come up, hey, whoa, one day, we be hell, hey, whoa. <laughs> These sentiments continue torturing us. We continue falling prey to these useless sentiments and continue allowing the cancer to grow. We are as people that remove sentiment and be dealing decisively with their own cancer. You see them progressing. Today we are uh, fighting you. Any person you give a uh, Japanese visa, he will go to the church and give testimony and so seed. I, I don't know. I want people to, if I'm talking, as I'm speaking slowly, please be digesting it. Be reasoning in what I'm saying. You understand? It, it's just like uh, somebody, people will say, you know, you know, I didn't too much uh, uh, go to this Catholic church. I was born there, but I didn't too much enter into the system, honestly speaking. I took Holy Communion without doing nothing. I just, me and my friend, I said one day, people line up to take Holy Communion. And I we say, we go and line up. They say, let us test this in how it is. We go as small as we are. Say, nothing, nothing will happen. We go line up and took Holy Communion. Come and chop it. Nothing happened. I say, ah, <laughs> he don't do now. So I don't really on the people. They say uh, pray for people. I didn't go catechism. People that Ndina uh, Mahochiku, uh, Russians. <laughs> people that uh, uh, that is first send human being into space. Yuri Gagarin. Even uh, before Yuri Gagarin, there is one person they secretly sent into space russia they call him i think uh, vladimir Ilu iluchev vladimir iluchev that is a that is a thing but there is something politically that happened they didn't they didn't put him as the first in history there are some things surrounding it so you Nkaku, that uh, never no na equatorial forest. Na wagi na iche kuku awo. Go wa kagwa na kwerendi. Ndioga wo. If uh, anything that happened, if they want, they will press one button and they will, the the one missile, one nuclear bomb will come and kill everybody in the zoo. But brainwash agi sigi kwerendi he kwerendi na hamado chuku. What I'm telling you is for you to understand how gullible we have been. Now, every guy, every right from time, we are suffering it. That is, we are paying the price of gullibility heavily today. Honestly, it's a pity when you talk to some people; they are still in that, in that stage, in that highly gullible stage. Let me come back again. The Japanese that killed Christians, any convert, Japanese convert, 
they will kill him kill not only him his family to make sure that none of because they know that if they leave any family member tomorrow he will rise up when he grow his he will be against the state he will tell the children the sad story of how the japanese government beheaded their brother or sister because he accepted christianity there will be nothing that wound nothing that that uh, uh, grudges against japanese state and it is not good these people they don't take any chances if you know white people they don't white this this uh, civilized countries they don't take any chances uh, uh, for granted they never do it they are thorough as thorough as you can as you can think they are the real resemblance of god god's creation or god's created human i'm telling you they don't take anything for granted they treat everything they don't they analyze and treat things that is why they are where they are today we ourselves we mix everything with sentiment superstition gullibility or what's not call it and uh me we leave it in now happen here now now these are people that behave like the fallen name very ferocious i mean the arabs they are fighting with very ferocious they go they bomb they kill they kill they they do anything that is abominable to these people but they never give up in 1972 a peace treaty was negotiated and they stopped as wise people as our sudanese are i want you to be getting the story the history correct 
they continue monitoring the terms of the peace negotiation. It's not like our own people, Igbo people. Indeed, you can use money to buy them and they forget about their far past and future. Now, I think even if there is a future, they will sell it and collect money. The South Sudanese, they were monitoring from 1972. They were monitoring the terms of their ceasefire, the negotiation of the end of the war. And uh, they saw that these people, they are not changing because they are ginger weight. They can never change. That is why any person that is telling you that, look, uh, we are going to get uh, Biafra or get our liberation or get anything from this quagmire we are in Nigeria through politics, through being Apaga or NDP or any this and that. That person is part of the problem. Any person telling you this thing is part of the problem. Because the person never understands either he's ignorant of the history of these people, the Janja witch. Go and ask South Sudanese. In 1972, when they had ceasefire, they were monitoring. And in 1983, from 72 to 83, that is after 10 years, they saw that the terms of their treaty, now these people are still, they never see change. They carried arms again. I say, oh boy, <laughs> either we fight now, or we leave this the most nasty fight to our generations coming. John Garang started. He was the, he was not the person that led the first fight. He didn't lead the first war. He's another person. John Garang. He was a youth. He rose up. He said, oh boy, I cannot. We cannot accept this. So, and. The country was plunged into another civil war from 1983 to 2005. They say we either get our independence or all of us will die. They are one day early now. You cannot compare this type, these people with their uh, friends or with uh, people in our land. Uh, the truth should be done. They should be told. I don't mean words here. Our people are very cheap. <laughs> when you look at even sometimes say you know the, when you the little knowledge when you look at what is happening in this struggle you you uh, when you say oh god why our people like this so cheap so cheap others are not like this like the south sudanese they fought for another 17 years 12 plus 17 39 years 2005 they have the final negotiation and the following year they had their independent they, they were declared they declared their independence that is how it's supposed to be you know people are giving bad exam uh, uh, you will kill yourself like south sudanese today are they speaking again where do you hear their voice again because south sudan there is no more war it's over that is how it's supposed to be they are developing they are doing their own thing and we are still shouting oh, what else okay okay when the case here mayor there is no other way than the hard way we must emancipate ourselves from being gullible either choice choice gullibility or through greed the greed have eaten deep into many of our people greediness and jealousy it's not some we are it's an understatement even this is our problem is greed and jealousy you see some people will be thinking saying or oh, now you think that uh, gonna madden he will be eating his own flesh why is it that it is mass and i'm the kind of they, are, they, are, they know why not to him do you remember when the story of the i mean the controversy of a supreme leader they are oh lord 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 nam the can yeah of run subuto in to pay our people to the extent i think in canada somebody asked the question boldly he was bold enough to ask that question and i think it's a woman it's a lady uh, why are you called uh, you know this is you are taking god's glory uh, you are called the supreme leader lord lord, lord, lord. 
Oh, you are taking God's glory. Our leader just asked a question. Okay. Thank you very much. I never tell people to call me Lord. But let me ask, who created Nigeria? People shouted, Lord Lugard. They say, okay. Now, in a real no one because a fellow nigger like you she will be called a uh, 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 love. That is why you are eating your own flesh. We are asked, they, they ask you who created, are you, oh, as far as he's a white person, Lord Lugard. Do you see we are we have failed woefully do you see why we are being punished and now you could not why your crying they make it everywhere thinking that we are living life when you think of your home you know you have no con no home to go to <laughs> let us emancipate ourselves from gullibility honestly you see this jealousy and envy this is this is the disease that conquered africa i'm i'm, I'm not telling you um, it, instead of my neighbor or my brother to succeed let foreigners succeed that is why what gave the european the audacity to use a brother against his fellow brother in africa the only race that sold their own people to foreigners in, in a very far foreign land i i am yet have been researching i never see any other race that did this that is why we black race have no dignity it started even in our land the europeans white people they have been they have been having dealings with eastern africans i must be honest with you the type of people the type of human beings in our land west africa is different from the ones in southern part and the eastern part of africa i must be honest with you the people in our land are so cheap very very cheap you know there is something you can fight with your brother no problem but when you now collaborate with foreigner a pure complete foreigner against your own brother that is where there is a very big problem very very big problem do you see we dear friends mostly Igbos, come to our land you see every family have a pastor or evangelist instead of people i've been saying this all these things we are pointing is the cancer that is eating us <laughs> All these things we are pointing. You can say, no, it doesn't matter. It, these are the cancerous, cancerous factors that are eating deep, making us to where we are staying as slaves. And, you know, onto people that we are one million times better off. You see South Sudanese, at least, you have white Arabs there with them in the north. Do you understand? You have black and white Arabs in the north. Now, they saw these people. They didn't even capitulate. Or being a, having an inferiority complex that these people are white. We cannot do it. Imagine that we have this type of white Arabs, that the Fulanese are kind of white Arabs. Hey! inferiority complex you will leave his brother i say now what do you know he said on your channel let them take us <laughs> but the southern sudanese they said no these are people that have dignity the dimkas and the other i think they have two major tribes the dimkas and the other tribe the other tribe are forgotten they fought these people without complex and today they are free where are those people that used to say oh biafra when you are you'll be like south sudan become a reference to us oh, look at south sudan they are do you hear it again you know our people are highly sentimental 
sometimes I, I call it people that are confused. Yeah, our people, people that are confused, highly distractible. Whenever I'm I like to read the Old Testament. It's the story of our people that I'm seeing. Nothing more. People that oh, just like babies. You will show them one thing. Within uh, the following minutes, once they remove their eyes, they'll forget what they are being told. You have to come again, start talking. People are clamoring, people are calling, selling, saying, uh, bring somebody like Namdekano, train him to be, at least he will wear suit like Namdekano, you know, uh, paint himself like Mazin Namdekano, be on video. Somebody told me this, be on video. Facebook video, morning night, and we will be watching him. Uh -huh. He will be giving us courage. Hey, back, I'm not mad at uh, L. And the people in the queen here, some of them were people that even you can respect in the struggle. I become... Uh, there are some things you will hear from some people you think are uh, hardcore. In short, you become almost frustrated. Forget about talking. We will do this. Uh, we will die. We are, uh, we will, oh, yeah. You let small things happen. People will start questioning. Now, nah, our will talk. Nah, nah, so the thing be, I had that. Uh, nah, uh, hey, uh, Mazi, uh, wait, uh, look at, they will send you voicemail. Nah, nah, wow. So I had, on the, nah, so, he make it explain, he, oh, oh, that is a, he, oh, he, re, he re give, your tongue will almost fall. You say, nah, what type of people are these? What, the, and, uh, I know that we are the people described in the in the Old Testament. They are pure. And we never change. We still remain in the bo. We never have that change in character. Our brethren, the Israelis today, they have advanced. They asked for a king and they had a king. We ourselves, we didn't know that uh, they were having a king. We still think that, oh, chu chu chi bueze. We thought that uh, we are too sacred. It is uh, the right thing. We didn't know that uh, you have to advance with the world. Evolution. It is, it, it is uh, the way God created the world. We shouldn't be uh, always spiritual, you know, uh, invoking things spiritually. No, no, no. We need physical manifestation. The problem we are having, the equatorial forest, we hid ourselves, our ancestors. Uh, they saw food in quantum. They didn't lack anything. So, how is it that uh, nothing again? Now, let us continue in our old ways. In the world, no changes. And we have no foreigners that come and meet us because no, no road. It's unlike all no thing that they you know <laughs> you will not even understand it's just like okay, for example a dog you are breeding in your house. Everything is okay. You never take him to you. You never see snake before. Anything you see, you buy toys, you play with the toys. Any day he goes out, you see a snake. You will think that is a toy. He will start, he want to play. And the snake will bite him. It's just like that. Do you understand me? That is the way we are. I, I put here in Dibo, And we continue behaving like in Dibo. Imagine I'm the kind. He never reached up to two months. So people are clamoring. Bring another person that will resemble him, so that on any any in Kasiobi. I now here we will be seeing him at least. Uh, we will be seeing somebody. Uh, please let him be talking, you know, gesticulating like our leader on video. We see, oh, the boy, we are gullible. We are not mature. We don't have mature minds, honestly. 
forget about uh, sentiments we are not mature in in issues communal issues communal fight <laughs> do you understand that is why like uh, you know the other day somebody is saying we are just talking it as a joke Hey, let us go to work. Hey, 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 hey. You bring. Well, you see some people. They... When everything don't hit, hit, they say, "Oh boy, this one will be talking to his fellow." Nah, nah, ne me pukuwa fuma o. Oh, one or change a camel. The other ones, nah, ne me pukuwa import. Oh, one from Malaysia can be bo. Ne me kuwa importation. Before this madman, no, no, I am the camel. But all, but then so good. Learn, 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 learn. Learn by on a trench. Now, learn. These are the what is being described in the ancient Jews exactly. So when you are looking far, look at yourself. <laughs> you are. He says it's us. They describe people that are highly callable to the situation sentimental hey, on, where is that your mercy so this is moses that led them they saw miracle everything but once it's gone they, uh, oh boy that where is that your god i beg do something that will be seen what is the difference between somebody that say bring another official leader we need another leader another official person that will be speaking like man So, at least our heart is there. Let me tell you this. I think Alhaji and Kulet, the second part. The Alhaji said, <laughs> he said, we know Ibos now. You know, we understand them. He said, they blame Buhari for shunning Ibos. He said, he said that is why he's having problem. He said otherwise, what we we know how to deal with them. Just make a few of them relevant. Take one or two of them, make, make them relevant. Let them be near in the presidency. Hey, they will now know. How, they leave them. Don't even talk. They will control their people because their people will respect them. Oh, he's a near near. He, he, he's a in the presidency. Eh? Anything he tells the people, they will do. Because that is the how how he said that is how, I will play that clip another day. That is how they behave. Little thing, <laughs> little thing controls them. Is it not the same thing? Are you not seeing it in hope of them? Are you not seeing it in all the governors? Are you not? Just invite them to the presidency to Asorok. When they come back now, and this year Asorok, now now wow. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, Obiano came and say, <laughs> I'm having me, me is part of my government. Uh, 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 any person, in case if they kill the Fulani, kill you, they will give a, they will pay 500,000. People, people, and people were listening, clapping, even clapping. And you are, you are thinking, what type of gullible human beings are we? Emancipate yourself from gullibility please that is what i'm preaching tonight there is this thing i want to read just a little bit for you to understand how gullible it's a news of today being october the 2nd 2021 on daily post he said end has come for killer heads men other criminals rendering parents childless or the current causes. <laughs> when you look at this, you you know you would think that maybe he have a standing army. Oh, there is a way he will tell the people, let us rise up and do protest to end all these things. And you now found out that it is the normal way of talking to gullible people. I want to play it so that you listen, please. I want to play it. I could have read it, but uh, let me just play it. Just few minutes, one, two minutes, please. 
Nigeria shall be a safe land again. Again. Let me start afresh, please. Listen. Nigeria shall be a safe land again. Listen, man. Dolly Booker. Amen. Traveling the world, South, East, and West will be without fear. Some of will not be afraid on their farm anymore. The source of this wickedness is George. Please, today. let me start afresh so that because I'm trying the, the volume. Uh, nah, 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 uh, the problem I know. Nigeria shall be a safe land again. Yeah. Traveling the north, south, east, and west will be without fear anymore. Yeah. Farmers will not be afraid on their farm anymore. Yeah. The source of this wickedness is George today. Yeah. The testimony of the source of this wickedness is George today. Yeah. The testimony of that judgment begins from now. Thank you, Jesus. Now, verse, verse 13 and the first phrase of it. Okay, let me explain to you. Let me leave it there, please. <laughs> we have uh, we have uh, many problems honestly what promotes gullibility in our land is too much this is pastor yedepo a mega pastor bishop yedepo founder of and president of living faith church worldwide on friday ran courses on criminal elements wrecking havoc across the country <laughs> he's running courses <laughs> Uh, yeah, they were doing a special prayer service organized by the church to mark 2021st independence day said it is time for god to judge killer headsmen and other elements that made parents ch children childless and wife wife's widows uh, you, something i want to bring there is when you read this maybe the headline you think that oh this man he has a plan practical plan no it's just the same gullible statements to keep gullible people you know in nigeria what keeps nigerians going is uh fake uh, uh, this uh, f uh, how do i put it presenting fake faces you will see somebody that is you know uh, 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 he has problems no no job no money everything and you ask him how are you every he said oh it's okay everything is fine even he put smile on, on on his or her face everything is okay and you say eh? do you know why i tell you everything is okay his pastor his that did you told, told him don't complain don't complain that God is uh, doing it. <laughs> it's all right to it's a uh, Nkasio Bindino now. The same the same Nkasio B that uh, what do you, uh, these slaves have in the Americas in the farms. <laughs> they understand. They have the same type of uh, Nkasio B comfort is fake comfort without you know uh, taking cognizance of the reality and facing it squarely as human beings this man is a is a is a the the chairman or the ceo of a of a church that has millions of people he is standing telling people that god will judge the killer heads men <laughs> that every uh, now everywhere will be quiet that there will be no more killer heads men and you ask him what are you doing about it no it's a prophecy you know everything will be you know what they are giving these people fake uh, uh how do you call it fake comfort so that these people you know oh have faith 
you continue maintaining the status quo. If somebody now comes to tell you, look, we have to do something practical to stop this headsman, let us at least, uh, uh, you know, organize vigilante in our community. Say, no, my daddy, Gio, look at it. You have said it. You have prophesied it. Whether you do it or not, no need. God will take care of them. Do you see what is gullibility? Do you see what is gullibility? Do you see it? What is gullibility? That is why I say emancipate yourself from emancipation from gullibility. This is the main problem we are having. I met some people, I think uh, Jehovah Witness. Uh, no, no, no. You don't need to join IPOB. He's not interested in uh, this Ndorondoro uh, Otichowa, worldly government. He's not interested because IPOB is all, you know, agitating. So he's not interested. He's interested in his work, his business, anything he are doing. And you don't, I look at this place because I don't know where to even start. You know, there is a, a place, uh, you know, there is somebody you will see, the way we talk, you know, at least that only, oh, maybe this person, you know, it's just like when you will see a baby, you know, you don't even know how to start uh, talking to her because he doesn't have, no, he never developed brain to understand you. <laughs> Do you understand me? Somebody that is telling you that he's not interested in worldly affairs or world, world governments. Because they are, they are waiting for their heavenly government. He's going, he's going to his daily work or daily business. He's wearing clothes. He's uh, using electricity. All these are things set up by the world government. You know, sometimes our people's gullibility is thinking on the issue you don't even know where to start this man now with is giving people fake comfort for them to continue believing and coming to church pretending that all is well nigeria will be better nigeria will be no don't do anything about it don't do if people are agitating for freedom don't join them just believe it, Nigeria will be better. Killer headsmen, God told me they will stop. After killing, imagine they come to your church and kill you. <laughs> you know these people, where I know that uh, they can hurt the hour. Do you remember when a direct menace, threat was given to, is it Pastor Suleiman, by the, by the, full and hits men about three years back or four years or something like that thereabouts and he announced it in the church he told his church members any full and man you see around this vicinity kill him but he didn't tell them that before he's saying that god will take control he didn't tell them that no don't kill him god will even if you see a book around society but don't worry god will take control of him no he didn't tell them because that threat is directly to him he feeling directly threatened when he is not threatened even if they are killing some church members he's not uh, we let's pray god will take care of everything do you see how wicked and evil these people are instead of bringing their people ally you know enlightening them telling them that look we need to do something this is not something that prayer can solve only that we need to do something and the gullible people they are there shouting amen amen Amen. I bet some of them will not live uh, more than this year. Some will be killed by Fulani headsmen. That time you will see their siblings shouting, Hey, whoa, I don't know, say it will be like this. So I never see them before, but uh, Fulani head. You know, Nigerians, they always believe something when it happens to them directly. That is how they are gullible. We have many, many faults. We have many faults as a people. And that is all these things that are bring that have brought us down. People that are supposed to be on top, we are down because of all these things. This selfishness, gullibility, jealousy, 
eh one nigga corner i can you who you know call him in comma so that you know instead of you to align to support you say no no why will it be him why not me i can do it now nah, this thing this man i can do it you cannot be like mazin namdikano we should remove ourselves from gullibility emancipate emancipation from gullibility that is what i'm preaching today we have been fooled for a very long time that nigeria will be better we have been fooled and that is what this Oyedepo is preaching because tomorrow you will see him he'll become a, a presidential candidate <laughs> oh it's a what is the second i mean the the the, the man in house arrest as a vice president osimbajo is he not a pastor today what is happening tomorrow you'll see Oyedepo go be there and people will start shouting nah so and i said this man be hey god uh, eh, we didn't know now we are telling you remove yourself from emancipate yourself from gullibility you will not you will not it's when you have the thing hit you you start shouting that time is too late you know europeans uh, they came to africa they in short they 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 colonize almost the whole world they see africans as gullible people they converted the trading centers into countries which they force indigenous people found in that enclave to embrace that is how europeans say uh, they start with trading is <laughs> why you continue trading 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 now before you know they ask the indigenous people now nah, give us land let the instead of all of us going and coming some of us will be staying here if we come we pack our goods there they will give them land they will build from there they say okay we need fence please all these lands that are around it uh, we need fence people will say okay take a land or some land around and build your fence they will be storing weapons before you know any person that near that area even they say hey, hey hey get out the person will say but what is it this is my land they said which land which land do you think that they will kill the person you know the way the fulani they are doing the fulani that is exactly the way the europeans did oh i need a livestock uh, program animal husbandry oh uh, nuruga and they will give them Oh, we under one Nigeria. Come, uh, at least they are bringing us meat. Oh, uh, here they are because little small small things. They are bringing meat. They are bringing cows, cattle to sell. We we eat meat. Okay, they come and stay. In the next decade, they start expanding. They tell, but uh, we don't give you this. I say, which kind this one? I beg, shut up. They start committing atrocities. Look at Lokpa. We give practical example. People, I said, they don't. They say they don't even know the the boundary where Joseph Carlo give to them. They don't even know again because they have expanded to everywhere. That is how the Europeans did. From uh, buying and selling, they will come and bring goods. Oh, you people bought. Ah, good. The next one, they say, okay, please, we need a a, a place to build near the sea there so that we can be uh, packing. If we reach, we can have somewhere to stay without worrying you. The villagers, they will say, okay, take, give, take this land to build. They will build. Another thing, ah, please, we need, you know, we like uh, also farming. Give us small, small lands around so that we can expand the beach, round it up with fence. It, you know, they will give them. Another time, they will say, ah, you see them, they will be packing ammunition, arms and ammunition, storing it there. Another of their coming, they bring people. People will be stationed outside. If you, people are farming outside, they say, what are you doing there? Say, farming. Which kind of farming? Move out from here. I don't know that you don't, you, you should not supposed to near this side. Before I talk, they, they shoot the person. That is how they killed our people and they colonize us. The same system the Fulanis are using in our land today. We are shouting, thank God that there is technology to record our voices 
so that in the next 100 years, what Mazin Namdi Khan, what Radio Biafra is to shout and warning our people will be played. Our generations coming, the, that generation that time we, we played. The same way we are we are talking about Azikiwe today. That is the same way they will be talking that Radio Biafra spoke about this. Mazin Namdi Khan, IPOB, they warned us. They warned on our ancestors. And many didn't listen. Emancipation from gullibility. We should learn from history. Do you understand? Let me ask this question. Why is it that uh, Africa, Africans are, they are colonized by Romans, Greeks, Arabs, Malays, all established colonies in African continent? at one point or the other why <laughs> why why not vice versa why didn't africans establish colonies in other continents it's a question that sometimes i never get the answer the reason the only thing i saw africans that try to invade european soil are the Carthaginians. at the early time in about uh, maybe 200 plus BC before Christ, the Carthage, Hannibal. He's a black. He's a black person. He's a black person in Carthage, Carthaginians. The, don't 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 mistake yourself, please. The people you see in Tunis today, I, 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 I've been in Tunisia. People you people you see in Tunisia today, they are not even the original Carthaginians, please. I was there in Carthage. I saw the museum of the first Punic War, second and third Punic Wars. I saw it by myself. Hannibal is a black person. The people you are seeing today in Tunisia calling themselves Carthaginians. No, they are not. They are mostly Romans. They are Italians, Romans. Because when they conquered Carthage, they depopulated they destroyed completely Carthage. now they bring their population the population of romans into to to inhabit Carthage today so the white people you are seeing that populated Carthage, they are not the original people and others when are when arab started it i mean when uh, islam started expansion at the seventh century Arabs conquest of uh, Africa, of uh, Northern Africa. Where they also, they intro many Arabs also joined them living there. But the original people there were Carthaginians. They are the only people that have the audacity to invade Rome, Italy. The, origin the only people, Africans, in, in, the, in the recent, in the recorded history, it was only Hannibal of Carthage. I think in 219 BC, he tried to conquer Rome, which sparked the Second Punic War. Do you understand? So that is it. Apart from that, no other African uh, people tried to conquer. None of them tried to invade or thou, you know, outside the horizon. The question is why? It's for you to answer it when you focus your energy fighting yourselves foreigners take advantage this is what they want us to be doing in ipob when we you know uh, responding to gossips listening to gossips we didn't know he escaped our mind about the united nations general assembly unga in new york do you understand and uh, because we are fighting it's a is a is a vivid example when we focus our energy fighting ourselves foreigners take advantage but europeans do you know when they became enlightened now because europe they ate themselves raw they fought more wars more tribal wars in europe than in africa do you understand but what enlightenment can cause it causes people to you know to think 
in another way, reason in another way. That is why after enlightenment, or during the course of enlightenment, Europeans started knowing that, look, we need to focus our energy abroad. Let us discover the undiscovered. Now, we, this energy, instead of uh, gods, the gothics fighting the, the uh, English, English fighting the French, in this one, right, they have the hard tribal wars anyhow. Now it is them that advise themselves. Let us go outside and look. Maybe we can see something to fight for as a common enemy. And that is when they started going about, venturing into the sea, entering thread down start. Many of those people, they are they were even hardened criminals that are supposed to be causing mayhem in our land. I mean in their land, sorry. Because they are expendables. Do you understand? Do you know that even at that time, Europeans, any person, any people, they exile. Any unwanted uh, people, they send them to their colonies. Go there. We don't want to see you in there, in this man. Like the Huguenots. The Protestants being thrown out of France. They organized expeditions for them to go to Brazil, in the Americas, and in South Africa. The white people because they are the undesirables they don't want them to stay there in the countries making problems now please go outside on self-exile and they came and started focusing their energy there they will discover something good and they will call the help of their native country <laughs> do you see do you see what enlightenment can cause not gullibility eating your brother eating your own flesh yeah? They, 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 they put down money. People, they call themselves billionaires. Politicians. They contributed money. <laughs> when Sometimes I cannot understand, honestly. You know, we are yet to see the condemnation of the burning and the killing in uh, Barista Geoffrey's house, the burning of his house, his vehicle, and the killing of his personal assistant. The Igbo governors and the politicians and billionaires, they don't talk about it. Do you see the height of hypocrisy? Do you see the height of wickedness and evil? Do you see it? All the Kwanumaka in honestly. The Arabs and Europeans invaded, conquered, and subjugated Africa. Not only physically, but ideologically. They gave us their religion. We are as others accepted it. Biafrans, mostly Igbos, they are, we accepted the Christian religion and turned against our own tradition. Sometimes, uh, let us go back and learn. Even from our Yoruba brothers. They are Christians, so they are Holy Ghost fire ministers. You never one day hear them go and cut one tree in their village. You say that tree need to be cut. Holy Ghost say cut it. It's witch. They don't do it. They respect their tradition. He does Oye Dekbo. Go to his his inner chamber. He is respecting their tradition. It's only our people. We are overzealous with with uh, gullibility. We are gullibly overzealous. We destroy ourselves, destroy our our environment in the name of accepting what they impose on us. Do you understand? Had it been we use our brain to do it, now put we try to acclimatize it with our own tradition, it would have been better. But no way. Everybody we we turn against even speaking our own language, Chuko Kikabiama. Some people say is a is sin. Yeah, now you start asking. So before the Europeans came, we don't have our language, we don't have our way of worship in our own way, we don't have who we call the creator. Is that what you mean? Is that what you mean? 
the people that you should ask this that ha don't have anything about who they worship these are the sons of ishmael the fallen you are seeing they are only they call their god allah according to allah is 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 not about islam is arab it's arab language both arabic christian they call it allah this is something they have been calling god even pray pray muslim time pray islamic era and this allah it, it is the same it came from the same almost the same source the sumerians a uh, jewish call it uh, elohim is l l uh, now we go there uh, you know arabic and jew and hebrew they resemble because all are semitic uh, languages they are semitic they come from the same source you understand that l this one say allah you say elohim it's the same thing it's just about the language now people we take it as a uh, when you call it like that oh you you are in heaven already you are with uh, uh, god already not knowing that it is only about is just language because god have we have no name it's only description description that is is different description it's just like father nam nam is no name it's a description because upon you is your is your father you call him father you understand so any person that uh, is that is father it's a description in every language you have a father papa père padre all our names all our languages the description that is why you have this god because you know names are different you know proper name is what differentiates you from another mas jonathan another person is mas okraf or not because we are humans so we we are we are similar now we need something to differentiate us it's human making do you understand so you see many of we are eight billion plus human beings but god you don't know what god looks like he never tell you his name the only place uh, the record we see moses asked but who are you say i am what i am according to english translation he said what i he didn't say i am who i am you know who depicts a human being but he said i am what i am what can be another planet what can be a fire what i am can be uh, a tree what i am it can be uh, uh, lightning is what, what i am what i am so any anyhow you want you describe him, uh, it or him or that entity anything you call it in any any of your belief but you see people being gullible when we describe our the god we are serving with our name our local name you you see people countering it but they can call it a uh, god they can say it's allah they don't know that they, they are it, those things are language differences <laughs> you understand deus portuguese dios uh, espanol uh j french it's the same god or is languages languages description description now why are you demonizing your own language describing the god your four forefathers have been serving before the advent of white man do you see gullibility do you see what we tell you you think about it that is all these things are the things eating us like cancer we continue making much ado about nothing in something that is very simple to explain or simple to understand when you have that maturity of understanding but you cannot understand it once you have no maturity once you have not reached that enlightenment stage or enlightenment stage do you understand that is what we bring out here 
so that you talk. If you see a fallen man, ask him what is what is their what is God in fulfilling? He will tell you Allah. Because they don't know anything about God pre Islamic time. They are using Arabic. Arab taught them God. It's not like us. We are different. Try to understand it. We have known God before Oyibo come. We call him Chukokike. So when you live your own way, start following the European only. Now I'm not against it but when you turn against your own fighting yourself you are just like fighting your shadow any person trying to fight his shadow is stupid isn't he so please let us emancipate ourselves from gullibility the scramble for africa was the invasion occupation division and colonization of most africa by europeans Europe, Europe left us with their ideological fingerprints, which is helping to keep us gullible to death, just like what I played before or year ago. You know, as wise people, you can manipulate something to become, even if it is a culture you imbibed or an ideolo foreign ideology, you can use it to your advantage. After all, uh Fulanese are using islam to their advantage advantage of their race that's it but the most stupid part is for you us to use the foreign ideology to con continue conquering ourselves destroying ourselves that is where it is evil and <laughs> you understand me oh yeah the people made us met his people not us we are ipob we are not gullible they made his followers to believe that God will be fighting for us, that vengeance is for God, etc. Do you remember the, the same way? Okay, we ignore the fact that the Europeans that instituted this version of Christianity fought for themselves. They used their brains to manipulate us. Uh, the Europeans that colonized Africa, are they, did they invoke the, the heavenly spirit? Is it angels that came and colonized us, sent by Europeans, or, or through their prayers? These are physical people that do things, boots on the ground. This person that is telling you that um, the headsmen, God will clear them. Amen! Which means, you know, these are the more evil people because they make people become gullible and no, just to have fake sense of comfort. You understand? False sense of security. Until they will be hit. You know, I told you, during the ISIS uh, war, during the time of Obama, in Iraq and Syria, which is still going on, they first, they came, they started killing the Christians. The the Christians in Iraq and 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 uh, Syria. People were there praying, and some were running away. But some of them, they thought they said, "No, if we run away, we will leave our land for them. We have to fight back." Oh, and they mobilized themselves, and they fought back. They started pushing Christians. They allied themselves with the Druze, the people they call the Druze the Kurdistan, the courts, PKK, they allied all of them, they came together. They started fighting ISIS. And, you know, miracle happened. Because that is the miracle. What you can do, what you are doing is a miracle. Because it's not everybody that has the brain to do it. So, it's not God that, that we come down from heaven. Let us stop this gullibility, please. It is killing us. That God will solve it for us. Amen. God will do it for us. Amen. God will bring electricity for us. Amen. God will send the uh, 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 angels from heaven to fight the full and headsmen for us. Amen. And even the God in heaven, anywhere that entity is, he will be annoyed and he will give the full and more power to slaughter you.
because they are doing the practicality. You know, to know is good, but to do is God. That is a saying. To know something is good, but to do, to do something is God, because God is practical. When you are doing something, you are representing God. That is it. God is happy. But when you are just uh, imagining, you are wishing, wishful thinking, you are even annoying God. Do you understand? The, the, the Jews, the, the Jews, the, 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 can't God be able to send his angels to go and uh, drive away the people in uh, Canaan, the Canaanites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, the Perusites, those that are occupying the promised land? Is God not able to send his angels to go and slaughter all of them and the Israelites will come and every, all of them will become dead body? So God has not that power. He had the power. But he wants the replica of God, that God in them, to be to happen. That is practicality. Go and take your land. Go and slaughter them. Do it by yourself. If you make a mistake, they will slaughter you. So go, use your brain. I create you. I give you the brain. Go and do it. And they went. And he's happy. Let's remove gullibility. When you see the fallen, they are doing their thing, slaughtering people. They have a vision. So that in the next hundred years, everywhere will be fallenized. Everything now, people that time will not know what happened. You understand? They will be superior. Now you will see there will be peace and tranquility. <laughs> Do you understand me? That peace and tranquility will be to the advantage of the fallen ears. They will be the colonizers. They will be the Lord. They will be maintaining peace. Peace at their terms. People will not know that it is the negligence of people that stayed 200 years back that caused this. That is what we are shouting today. When you are doing something, you are representing God. Do you understand me? What the fallen angels are doing, God is even, you know, don't misunderstand me. But I am saying it as it is because they are doing practical things, planting something that, you know, in the next hundred years they will be reaping it to our detriment. But we understand this. That is why we are here in order to counter them. In order to open your eyes. To reveal to you that by doing all these things you are doing. By being, you know, just looking for your own selfish interest. In the name of uh, polit politics. Uh, political power. Oh, going to do a shower for Allah Haji. For them to give you political power. That you are doing the work of Satan. <laughs> Do you understand me? That is what is happening. Most Christians, uh, most Christians and indigenous people of the north and south still believe that God will fight their wars and defend them in the face of these killers. Or oh, these killer full of the terrorist edge men. The Nigeria politicians cap capitalize on our gullibility in order to continue to perpetrate their crimes against the populace. You know why the fallen in, they are on rampage. When you tell people, Christians, so both in the north or in the middle bit in the south, organize yourself, arm yourself, and kill this. Well, hey, God! No, I went to. I uh, will. We do forty-one days fasting. God will do it for us. And as you are doing, as you are doing that fasting, the full and headsmen, the full and terrorists, they will, they will surround, they will surround you and slaughter all of you. When you reach in the presence of that God, he will throw you into the hottest part of hellfire for your stupidity because you are stupid and gullible. Because he will tell you, this is not the way I, the way I created you is for you to do something. You understand? Israel, you are talking today, the God of Israel, they have nuclear weapon. They didn't continue praying to God. God, come and help us. Oh God of Abraham, you we are in a modern age you will need to do something practical do you understand they work hard ally themselves 
to the United States, to the West, and obtained the nuclear weapon. They are the they are they are one of the best they have one of the best military in the world they are one of the most technologically advanced countries in the world israel you're seeing today it didn't come by prayer it didn't come by fasting when you pray you call god of uh, israel god of this but the israeli they are working very hard because they have many enemies that is why both the indigenous people in the north in the middle belt in the south we need to come together we need to make sure to rise up against this co common menace common threats is the fallen name they are killing everybody rise up equip yourself in communities in your tribes in your nations in your territories in your local governments in order to checkmate in order to kill back these people otherwise you'll be crying always and those people that are killing you the fallen you will see him that even god is with them because they are doing the practical thing they don't care until you rise up that is when god will be with you in order to be doing practical because god loves practicality you cannot you shouldn't be calling god or fasting and praying something you can do something you can crack your brain and do it no that is stupidity it's just like your your son or daughter of uh, 30 years he, 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 you know he will go out anything that happened he will come and run back to you uh, uh daddy daddy uh father father I'm pa, uh, look at uh, this person he's met or even his senior the person he, 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 he fights me you even disown the person he said but are you, are you coming for me to come and defend you as 25 and 30 years old you are stupid that is the same way when you are calling god to come and destroy the fallen heads men for you you are doing exactly the same thing a child you are ch you are son of 30 years we go outside they beat him he come to report to you as the father but uh, this uh, uh chick beat me eh? will you be happy you will see that oh this son this son uh, <laughs> i can't help you if you cannot help yourself but you can do you could have done 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 differently as a father if it's four years five years eight years you know that he never mature <laughs> you understand we the world we are we are matured the world has matured we are no more in the time of a miracle we are in the time of practicality you know in the bible according to the record they say the utopian eunuch he was a uh, reading in his chariot and he didn't understand and god sent uh, one apostle is it philip and god disappeared him and he appeared in the way of ethiopian eunuch because that time there was nothing like a plan if we go by the story that is why he can uh, disappear in galilee and appear in antioch because that time human beings have not matured the brains have not developed just like the same thing you can carry your child your child of two three years to scale a, a small fence but when he's a uh, 20 years you as a father even uh, it's you that can tell him carry me even you cannot carry a, your child of 20 years to scale maybe a two, two uh, one meter one meter fence no you cannot help him because he's of age that is the way we are as a humanity that time somebody can disappear and appear somewhere god can do it but today if uh, god will send you that message he will bring a flight ticket because you know there's a airplane human being ha, ha, is matured enough so uh, to bring a airplane you buy your ticket and travel to anywhere that is disappearing and appearing you travel from nigeria in the next seven hours you are in the united states is it not appearing and disappearing something that couldn't have been able to 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 happen without the discovery of a flight when people are using you see to from uh, from nigeria to america can take you two or three years see you see using uh, cells or steam engine it can take two or three years we are you know uh, tempest can take you of course for five months but the way that we do you you know you fight with it can take you two to three years if you even reach
But today, human being is matured enough to build a crowd. You buy your ticket, organized. Everything is organized. You buy your ticket. Oh, you have a message from Nigeria. Somebody, oh, you have a vision of your in-law in America. Okay, you enter flight. You buy your ticket. You buy your ticket, enter flight. Before the, before the following day, you are there in New York. You land. Oh, how is it? Seven hours before, you were in Lagos. Now you are in New York. That is a miracle, is it, isn't it? But if it is before, when human beings have not, uh, you know, uh, uh, when human beings have not matured, evoluted, God can make you appear, disappear under piano. He says it's normal. So let us stop being gullible by praying and knocking our head to the wall on something that we can do by ourselves. This is gullibility. This is where I'm going to stop.